Welcome everybody to a Learn Squared live stream. We got a really exciting one for you guys today. I'm Nick from Learn Squared. I'm joined by Mr. Louis Laurent, the man of the hour. Welcome, Louis Laurent. Hi, thank you. And uh, we're going to be looking, number one, premiering a brand new course. Louis has created not one, but two courses <laughs> for Learn Squared. Uh, it's pretty incredible. The first one is coming out very soon, on the 23rd, in fact. So uh, we're going to show you guys what that's all about today. You can see it on your screens right now, actually, the amazing uh, final images that came from this course. There's four total deliverables that Lewis did. Each one is just visually stunning. And uh, you guys are going to be able to sort of get a look into his mind in creating those things throughout the show. Now, before we jump into the festivities today, I do want to give you a little rundown of what today's show is all about. So in addition to premiering the course, we're also going to get an exclusive live demo from Lewis uh, showing the course workflows. He's actually going to be creating a brand new piece of concept art live on the stream. I haven't even seen this, <laughs> this thing before, so I'm pretty pumped for that. Guys, post some. Uh, we're getting a lot of positivity in the comments, by the way. Uh, Mars Sa, Loey HG, Remus, Enzo Minaro, Twin Sane, Tengai Mac. Thank you guys so much for the positivity, for the love. Make sure you post some uh, hearts, some, some waves. Post some uh, some love for Lewis in there, uh, CeeLo in there as well. So uh, in addition to doing this live demo, if, as, as if that's not enough, right? We have another extra thing on today's show. We're going to actually be giving away a copy of the course to one lucky viewer on the stream. So pay attention to this part, guys. The way that you can enter the giveaway is that in the chat, what you want to do is post in the YouTube chat a question for Lewis, professional question, you know, appropriate to what we're talking about here. So maybe about the course, about the uh, about his career, about his uh, art workflows, and use the hashtag hashtag concept art along with your question. Uh, so in the same post as the question itself. The really fun part about that is that not only is that going to get you an entry into the giveaway contest today, but every uh, relevant question you ask will get you another entry. So you actually have multiple chances. You can increase your chances to win by hanging out during the show and continuing to ask questions. So make sure you ask questions, guys. Now, it, I'll just throw in a little bit of, uh, you know, rules here. You can't just spam questions. You can't ask questions like totally unrelated. They're not going to get you entries into the contest. But if they're thoughtful, real questions, uh, that's going to get you in there. So Ask away, ladies and gents. I'm going to be here fielding questions the whole time. Lewis is going to be doing his uh, demo. And I think, uh, Lewis, what do you think? The, the best way to kick this off is premiere the trailer here today. Yeah, awesome. So, guys, this, you guys are the first people seeing uh, the brand new trailer for Lewis's course. Take a look. Let us know what you think. And get those questions ready. Here we go. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Louis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Louis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well. From this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users, coming out next year. So you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com.
There you go. Trailer for the new course, Dynamic Concept Art 1 is coming November 23rd. I am so excited for you guys to get your hands on this course. There's so many amazing things. Louis, you're yeah. a beast. You're a monster. It's amazing. <laughs> no, thank you for the kind word. Just, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the, the people that are hype as well. And yeah, very honored to be part of uh, Land Square now and be able to teach humbly uh, what I've learned as well uh, on my side. We're honored to have you. This is this is super exciting. We already have questions coming in. We had a couple questions from before the show as well. So uh, no shortage of questions. But before we get to the the viewers' questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my hostly uh, powers here and just ask some of my own <laughs> right out of the gate. <laughs> you uh, the 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 style of creativity in this course is it, I I feel like it's something I haven't even seen uh, to this level in other Learn Squared courses. Like your your particular brand of um, just really using your instincts and using your subconscious mm -hmm. to inspire your art. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, I, I really wanted to to try to as well simplify um, as well uh, a lot of the workflow. Like uh, you know, when you have just a, a piece of paper and a pencil, it, it just straight to the idea. And I really wanted to have the same with uh, with the three D workflow and mixing with uh, the two D and with the magic of digital. Now you can really have so many cool things happening, and you can force the happy accident. Uh, happy accident is something that uh, the workflow is based a lot on it, and I think it's what creates uh, as well uniqueness. Uh, and trying to you know um, having original ideas that maybe stand out a bit, uh, and at the same time you know relying a lot on fundamental skills like composition, and design, stuff like that. So yeah. Um, really try to simplify the workflow and have something very straight to the point, to the, to the end goal. It's, I mean, it, it's really fascinating to think about the idea of having, you know, making something that is really beginner and intermediate friendly while still creating stuff that looks like the stuff that everybody's seeing on screen here. Like <laughs> that's gotta be a tough, uh, line to, you know, tightrope to walk. But yeah, you you did it amazingly. Um, Thank you. And so the amount of content that you put out, <laughs> it's two <laughs> courses worth of content. So to, to, to clarify, I, I saw some questions in the chat as well about this uh, with the second course. We mentioned it in the trailer, but uh, this course is um, a Dynamic Concept Art 1, and there will be a Dynamic Concept Art 2. Yep. But both courses exist on their own like they can be taken on their own and understood separately you, you know it's it, you don't need to have one to understand the other uh you know it's not like this is sort of like a partial course or anything like this in itself is a concept to completion full you know workflow that you're doing in the course yeah, yeah definitely. now you know coming up with with this amount of stuff what was that like for you? You know, like, is that like, oh, it's another day for me. Like, uh, you know, no big deal. Or, you know, how did you <laughs> kind of, you know, approach that? Uh, no, definitely. Like, the, I mean, make, making the course, I think it's the biggest challenge that I uh, had in my life. Like uh, teaching is crazy, um, but it's really, it really feel good, you know, to, to reset everything, uh, give everything that you have and really trying, you're doing your best, you know, because it's, I really feel like, feel like this is my baby, you know, my product that I really need to to do something that is really um, really nice and that people we really appreciate and uh, learn. And so yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was quite a challenge. And I think I, I, at the same time, I, like I really wanted like to to give everything that I learned. So that's why I think I, I've done maybe too much at some point. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I uh, really wanted to to give everything and not, you know, um, uh, choosing on stuff and uh, selecting too much uh, stuff. So, so yeah. I don't know that I think everybody appreciates the amount of work that you put into this. I, I wouldn't say too much, Lewis. I think everybody in this <laughs> chat right now is very thankful and happy that you put in so much work. Um, so I want to get, before we jump into the actual uh, demo, let's get a couple of viewer questions in here. Before the show started, we had uh, Dougie Ladd who asked the uh, question, a really uh, interesting question of when you're starting a, a piece of art, are you setting up 
you know, sort of a story for this work, or are you just kind of jumping in blind and seeing what comes out of it? Well, it, it really depends. Um, sometimes it's um, like a, I have just an image in, in mind or a design, so I will go straight and maybe finding some cool references. But if I, I want to, to push further the design and the story uh, and do like, um, like I, I do sometimes in my project, like do multiple keyframe in the same world and push really the design and the story a bit further than rather just an, just an image. I will definitely like have a brief, uh, creating a plan, creating a little story, having some background behind, uh, making maybe a lot of research on what I'm doing. Um, so it's a bit more believable. Um, but at the same time, always trying to mix with some crazy idea that uh, you wouldn't think uh, at the beginning um, and forcing against the happy accident and trying to, to have some stuff. I still want to have something that is organic. So at the beginning, I will start maybe with a story and it will it will is a bit the, the starting point, but there is a high chance that I will come up with something totally different maybe along the way. And I mean, just on that subject, the, the pictures that we're seeing here, these are clearly all within one world, within one yeah. concept, like very cohesive. Can you just really briefly uh, touch on what, uh, you know, what is your concept behind this world that we're looking at? Yeah, so um, I, I always love the travel. And this is something that I do on, on concept art and design is like imagining place that I could, I, I would love visit almost. And I, uh, I, I love as well, like, um, uh, yeah, travel, hiking, stuff like that. And so with this project, I wanted like to create a really, really simple story. So we have like, um, it's in a sci-fi world uh, and we have like people um, arriving on a new planet. And so they are discovering this planet. And so in order to discover this planet, they have um, this little, um, you know, a group of people like scouts. So their job is basically to uh, to explore this planet, maybe taking some information on the uh, on the map and what look uh, look, look like the um, like the plants, uh, the rocks, um, is there creature or stuff like that on the planet. So well, yeah, the first part of the course is on one set of the planet, and the second uh, courses will be like on the second place on the planet, like where where they have uh, the base, where they land on the planet. So, um, oh, so, cool. Yeah. So they're like in the same universe, the two courses. Definitely, like, yeah, the two courses are, are like in the same universe. And using, I, I do use uh, some asset from the, the first course. So it will be like a good complete completion, you know? Wow. You guys heard it here. Louis Laurent Cinematic Universe coming soon. <laughs> the LLCU. I, uh, I am really excited to jump into this demo. So, guys, we're going to, uh, start the demo portion of the show, but don't worry, your questions will still be asked during that part as well. So uh, I'm going to jump over to you, Lewis. Make sure that you uh, got your blender open because yeah, know when, uh, we're switching okay. over. Oh, we're on it already. Okay, awesome. So um, do you guys see my uh, PRF as well? Yep. Yeah, so I will introduce, uh, introduce maybe uh, quickly um, what I'm thinking about. So I will be doing like a, a fantasy piece kind of, and I have this past work. Uh, I um, always love to check my past work as well and maybe to create something that is kind of in the same universe. So, you know, creating this maybe uh, IP uh, form of like a language, visual language of an artist. And so I want to create something that is, um, it was inspired by the old Mesopotamia. So I will be doing something um, quite in the similar world with a lot of greenery, maybe, um, maybe more sand, sandy um, uh, environment. Uh, so in terms of references, I have some old master painter that I really love for different reasons. So here I can look like for lighting, uh, scale. Um, here there are some runes. Um, this is from David Roberts. Very, very good. Um, ancient uh, painter and artist that is doing a lot of stuff like that is crazy. Um, some really cool shapes, uh, maybe just to keep in mind, you know, what look like uh, some uh, cool shape design. Um, again, lighting, some different um, trees uh, that I like here. Uh, different rendering as, as well. It's more watercolor, watercolor, but I really love like the, again, the shape design, the scale of stuff. Um, here more the mood and the value. 
So a lot of different re references that I will you know look at when uh, designing and trying to to grab the the, the essence of the of the of the references and and, and maybe try to create my own uh, unique design. And, and so, if, oh, I and, do just want to point out uh, Mars Zah's question being answered uh, preemptively. You read Mars Zah's mind, Lewis, uh, talking about your approach to making reference boards. So thank you for your question, Mars Zah. Yeah, um, and yeah, for uh, for cropping the references, you just like to select something, and you keep pressing C, and you can crop. So yeah, it's very useful. Um, so yeah, th this one is, is going to be my main references, like for the materials and even the design. I really love the spherical shape, and uh, I want every time like I see the re references like that, I, I, I try to imagine like what if the the sphere is like 10 times bigger in it's maybe in a house or a marketplace or something like people could live. You could have like maybe, you know, a little uh, entrance or it could be like a big temple and in the middle of the desert, uh, you, you could have like runes uh, around. Um, so yeah, always like having like the classic references and adding a twist. Um, so again, new, uh, other references like for the for the different material and maybe pattern, uh, African pattern. So yeah, I think we, we can jump into the, the Blender demo. And and you talk about that in the course as well, of like having your your set of references and ha making sure that you have a twist that really yeah. makes it, gives it that extra spice. Like, can you talk yeah, a little exactly. bit more about that as well? So the twist, I think it's like the the concept art, uh, you know, piece that you add to the, to, to the stuff. I really love like design again and designing a world that doesn't exist. So I, I, I'm not usually making like, um, let's say like, you know, a real stuff, like a, a Last of Us stuff, we, we can say. Even really great design, of course, but I <laughs> simply prefer, you know, designing my own world with unique stuff that doesn't exist. It's just my, my preference. Um, and so most of the time, you know, having like a references, stuff like that is already like concept art uh, almost, you know, it, it looks crazy and uh, almost like uh, from another world. But I think this twist really helped to to yeah, to adding this concept art uh, taste that will um, make it epic and iconic, like uh, a new design that is uh, you know, um, yeah, iconic. I would say is the, the right one. That makes total sense. And, and I do just want to shout out a couple of people uh, who are posting some love in the chat. Uh, Pratik Kulkarni saying the demo is so beautiful the way Lewis made abstract shapes in VR and modified them later. That is a big part of your Thank sort you. of workflow, right? Is kind of like letting something change all the way throughout the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love Happy Accident. Uh, Happy Accident, uh, I think, are a very close friend of mine. <laughs> I really love <laughs> like to to have um, to have a workflow toward Happy Accident because so many times you you are creating something and. You, as, uh, what I thought as well is to embrace Happy Accident. When you, you have new ideas sparking uh, when you're um, creating, you should embrace them. If it excites you more uh, to do the new idea, you should embrace and not you know just pursue what you, you were doing and really going, going toward that direction. It's, it's very rare that I, I start a project, that I have something and I finish with the exact same thing. Um, especially with personal projects, um, most of the time, uh, I, I want to have fun, you know, because at work, uh, I just do idea from others. Uh, so obviously, uh, I just want to have fun and uh, not like restricting myself to do one thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of like using that freedom, taking advantage of that, you know, like you can do whatever you want. So why not? <laughs> why not do whatever you want? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I want to get another question in here. Uh, Ladies and gents, keep the questions coming, by the way. Even if uh, I don't read it immediately, uh, I am, you know, logging it on the thing. Our people behind the scenes are logging them, uh, you know, the appropriate ones, at least. Everybody has been appropriate so far. Uh, they're all being logged uh, in the giveaway itself. So, uh, you know, don't worry if I don't ask your question. That doesn't mean that you are not entered in the giveaway. Uh, I will just put a little reminder in there for anybody who wasn't here during the part where we talked about this. Uh, we're premiering Lewis's new course, Dynamic Concept Art 1 right now. He's giving a live demo 
of a uh, an exclusive new design live on stream, and you can actually win a copy of the course. We're giving away one free uh, copy of the course to one lucky winner on today's show uh, who asks a uh, related question with the hashtag concept art included with the question. And uh, you can be entered, you know, multiple times by asking multiple thoughtful questions with that hashtag. Uh, I do want to throw in there that I didn't say at the beginning of the episode, but uh, the giveaway lasts until the end of the show. So, you know, you can't ask the question like post stream and, and be entered. So make sure you ask it during the stream, uh, in the stream chat. And uh, you do have to be here at the end of the show to you know claim the prize so make sure you guys stick around actually to the end of the stream now having said all that let's get a question in here <laughs> we have so this is one aspect that we're not actually doing on the episode you're you're sort of starting from the blender stage here but uh yeah. we have twin sane uh saying talking about vr so what are your favorite reasons to use vr versus traditional 3d programs. I've been curious about trying it for a while, so I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing how you use it in your process. Thank you, Twinsane, um, for the question. So VR, VR again, um, we, we talk about, you know, uh, Happy Accident, and VR is very, very uh, friend with Happy Accident. <laughs> it, it's full of Happy Accident, actually. So the, the workflow is very instinctive, and you, you start to create, and, you know, stuff happen in front of you. It's very abstract as well when you, you start creating. Um, but you can be uh, still very precise because you can do like at surface stuff uh, in VR. Um, but again, it's very um, more for the sketch phase, I would say. Like I would start maybe in VR and refine to Blender. Um, but it's very powerful as well. It's very efficient and fast. Um, so so yeah, it's a very great tool. Uh, it's just a shame that they, they don't do uh, uh, as much... Uh, Updates on the software, um, but it's still very, very powerful tool. And so uh, we we're actually getting a lot of amazing questions. So I do really want to try to kind of get more of these in. Let me jump in here with another question uh, while you work here. So we have um, this is kind of like a uh, a general question that I think is important to a lot of artists. Uh, Loey HG saying. How do you try to make yourself stand out against the sea of amazing talent on sites like ArtStation? Mm, great question. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the I think the hardest part, especially when you're a student, to stand out, um, because you you have two ways. Uh, it's easier you try to really stand out and keep it, it can be really hard maybe to find a place for you, or you you just um, do like um, you copy maybe the portfolio of, the, uh, of someone in the studio you want to enter and you will make it obviously but maybe you are not going to be very happy because you are just uh, trying to fit in the industry and not really trying to uh, do what you really love mm. um, so I think it's a balance you have to find like um, the proper balance between uh, making the stuff you love but at the same time uh, you have to answer the what the industry is asking. So there's definitely a, but I think w once you are in the industry, you you can like maybe you don't care anymore and just do the stuff you love, you know? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Like once you have the pull, you can be like, all right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna do what I say now. Yeah. A personal project. And... Um, so here's a question that was actually asked before the stream started. So, uh, you know, not a part of the giveaway itself, but thank you for the question to Dougie Ladd. How important, and it's a great question, thank you. How important would you say imagination is when compared to technical ability? Do you think it can be cultivated or nurtured, imagination? Um, imagination, yeah, you have, uh, I think it's very linked as well to your uh, visual uh, library. Um, so definitely imagination is a big part of having a unique idea. Um, and for that, I would say, like, you know, uh, obviously looking at a lot of references every day, uh, being curious about um, uh, everything, like every art form, even like your life in general, uh, experimenting things is definitely a, a good way as well to expand uh, our mind. But yeah, I think like as artists, we, we should like experience a lot of stuff and, and bring it into, you know, our, our art and... Uh, 
but yeah, imagination is quite uh, a topic as well. I think I, I spoke about it as well a bit uh, about uh, visualization as well, as a different one uh, in, in the course. Um, about visualization in the sense of. Uh... So yeah, visualization is, um, I would say, is a. Uh, how I see it is um, the ability to to see something in your head, in your mind, and it, it can be very clear, like a clear image or a clear design, or it can be you know very blurred. So it really depends on the idea. And I really think again, it's very linked to your visual library. And mm. the the more you you nourish your visual library, so I I, I cannot count like how many days I spent just looking at Pinterest and you know making mm. board and. But I think it really pay off at some point. Like it's it's almost like passive work, because it's what your again uh, it, it will like happen in your uh, inconscient, like subconscious at some point, and you are going to to have ideas sparking during the day and happening. And I think it, it's a great. It it happens just because you know it's your mind. Uh, I think if you if you are looking at not know like to cats every day, you you are just going to think about cats, you know. So. Nothing wrong with looking at cats if you're trying to design cats. <laughs> yeah, of course. But yeah, wa watch movies, guys. You know, look at other amazing artists. It's, it's great advice. I uh, I want to get another question in here. Uh, not to cramp your style, Louis. Let me know if I'm you know asking too many things. You know, if yeah, you're, yeah, uh... no, it's fine. It's a bit hard to uh, concentrate on the same thing. To... <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. Not so uh, I'm gonna do a couple of these uh, answers in here that you know questions that I can field. Um, so we had a question earlier about the, uh, so Yusuf was asking, when does the first course release and when does in the following year, does the next one release? Um, yeah. so that, that's one that I can answer. Uh, thank you, Yusuf, for the question. So the first course, the one we're talking about today releases November 23rd of this year. So that's in what, like 12 days, very soon it's available to pre-order right now. And uh, I didn't really mention it, but you know, one really exciting thing about it is that the Black Friday sale price is already in effect. So for anybody who pre-orders the course, you know, if you uh, pre-order it now, you're getting the sale price immediately. So you don't have to wait until Black Friday for that. That's pretty great. I, you know, I love getting a deal. <laughs> so, uh, so jump on that, ladies and gents. And uh, you know, especially like if you're waiting for the giveaway. And then if you don't happen to win, you get that nice, uh, you know, uh, consolation that the course is much cheaper than it would normally be. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Now, in terms of the second course, the second course doesn't have a release date yet, but uh, that is coming out next year. So we don't have an exact uh, date on it. Lewis is, of course, working very hard on putting all the finishing touches in, but uh, it's it's a monster. The The first course... To give you just a general idea, the first course is maybe like maybe like eight hours long uh, of content, which is you know that's that's up there for a learn squared course. And the second one is I want to say it's closer to like twelve hours, um, and we're still you know some stuff is getting added, so that's uh, going to be a big one. You guys are going to have a lot of learning uh, that you can do, and and don't worry, of course, with all our uh, learn squared courses, there's always uh, a whole lot of interactive homework assignments that you're doing throughout the course, you know, sort of like a piecemeal. So every time you're learning an individual skill, there will be a homework assignment to let you kind of digest that and, and do something based on what you just learned. So you're not just like getting overloaded with information and, you know, sort of forgetting everything you just got. <laughs> um, so we're still getting a bunch of great questions. Thank you, everybody, for all of your questions. Thank you, everybody. I think it is probably time we're uh, doing the way that Lewis's voice is coming through is through a Zoom call, and it uh, apparently <laughs> is going to end soon. So um, we, okay. I guess, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, <laughs> keep in mind, Lewis, that we have uh, yeah, yeah. ten minutes on the call. We're gonna don't worry, ladies and gents, on the stream. We're gonna restart the Zoom call. So hopefully, it'll go without a hitch. Maybe we'll watch the trailer again while that <laughs> while we set that back up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the stream will will still go. So I'm going to get another question in here. Uh, we have Marza saying, uh, it's a really interesting question, and thank you, Marza, for the question. When you're trying to hit a certain quality level in your images, like let's say, for example, in this course, you delivered four final images. 
what do you look for when you're trying to hit like the you know equal quality level for all four of those images to make them feel like they are belong to the same universe mm, i think for them to belong in the same universe just basically we create a, a kit bash uh, during the course so you are going to create a kit bash and you are going to use your assets to create your world so your your, your asset will de determine like um uh, how look, how how your world look the shape and wedge and stuff like that and so basically by using the same asset all the time um um, uh, um ar around all the different keyframes that you're going to do like the, the different set design as well uh, it, it will give uh, some kind of uh, consistency between all the image and then for the more uh, i would say like technical aspect or maybe like the the level of quality um, we do have as well um, a specific workflow on um, like uh, each step like doing like the texturing work the lighting and every image and every um, set design will have the exact same treatment so you should you know uh, have something that is still uh, homogene and at the same level of quality uh, especially, especially like for the paint over phase um, everything have the same treatment so it should give you like a, like a, some kind of help to have some something that is uh, the same quality. There you go. Thank you again, Marza, for the uh, for the question. And uh, so we're gonna jump in here with another question here. We have um, Remus talking about when you learn to abstract things and see like different perspectives of things like we talked about in the trailer would you say that you know that improves the quality of your concept art or how does it change kind of your your view on concept art in general uh c can you say it again so that's unique so uh learning to use these abstractions in your art and and mm -hmm. kind of use your subconscious how would you say that that affects your, your quality of your concept art and how has it changed your concept art over the years? Um, I, I think uh, it, it gives some kind of maybe a, a uniqueness. It's a slightly different because you are uh, you are not uh, maybe re referencing too much on something, uh, or you you will find like the reference after that you 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 did your abstraction. Um, but yeah, I think the, the best part of abstraction is definitely like having an idea that you haven't thought uh, in the first place. Uh, so it definitely helps to design. And I think it, it, it relies as well a lot on your uh, instinct uh, abstraction. And again, on your uh, subconscious and what you have in mind, what you uh, you have learned, what you have experienced. And so, um, you know, I think everyone is different, so every abstraction should be, you know, different as well. So, and it gives your style. I think at some point, like just relying on your abstraction is relying on your instinct. So, it give it's your style as well. So, I think it's a nice way, like, to to find your style. Is there ever a moment? And this is a question from me. Once again, thank you for the question. Uh, and it, I just want to build on that. And like, is there ever a moment where you say, like, oh man? Am I going to be able to pull one out this time? Like, am I going to have something in my subconscious that can get me there? Um, to for if I have a specific task, you mean? Or... Yeah, like you're um, you're designing something and you say like, uh oh, you know, do I have any ideas? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the thing with abstraction sometimes, like in five minutes, you can like like ten different super cool ideas that you want to develop, or in one hour you have uh, nothing. It really depends, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really linked as well to your creative uh, juice, like energy. Uh, so if you have some kind of fatigue or you are doing all the time the, the, uh, the same thing, you, maybe uh, you are not going to have like a super cool idea. But you know, to be honest, like not all the tasks are super creative. Sometimes it, you know. I mean, it's like the design is already made, and you just have to make it look better, stuff like that. So, but most of the, most of the time, you, you figure out uh, how to do it, or you can rely on the good old, you know, uh, 
really trying to to do something with good references and uh, not doing abstraction basically but it rarely happened that i i don't have like any uh anything to do um i just want to throw in there some thanks for everybody in the chat everybody is uh <laughs> was on the edge of their seats with the uh that moment when you started getting the spinning wheel so thank you guys for <laughs> lily <laughs> hg enzo <laughs> Uh, everybody for the for the love when uh, when that was happening that that was a bit of a uh... yeah it's a, it's a blender it's a <laughs> blender is an awesome software but please blender please do something for your stability please it's a, <laughs> the only thing that really miss on blender is the stability it, it crash other time but uh, other than that the software is perfect thank you blender the control s very important for any artist oh yeah all the time <laughs> um so. Uh, Loey HG has a, uh, another question about VR, which again, we, uh, that VR is a big part of the course. Uh, and I do want to clarify that the course does not require you guys to use VR. Everything that Lewis does in VR, it, he also teaches the exact same method, how to do it in Blender or in any other 3d software that you choose. So, um, you know, VR is. Lewis's preferred method for, you know, sketching things and coming up with really fast concepts, but it is not, you know, a prerequisite for using the course itself. Mm -hmm. uh, now, having said that, Lewis, uh, VR being your, uh oh, I think uh, Lewis has been kicked from the call. So now you guys just have me. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to throw it to a trailer real quick. I'll get, I will get to your question though, um, uh, Louis HG, in just a second. And uh, we're going to watch the trailer once again. So, ladies and gents, Enjoy the uh, course trailer one more time. I'm going to get Lewis back on the Zoom call in the interim and uh, hang tight. Keep coming up with questions. I'm having a great, a great time. I hope you guys are too. All right, let's do it. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Lewis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Lewis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well. From this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users coming out next year. So you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com. Guys, show some love for Lewis. He's back on the call here. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh, for hanging out, everybody. Thank you, Lewis, for doing this demo. It's looking amazing so far. Yeah, I'm building this kind of uh, uh, temple, and maybe or, or maybe it will be a marketplace. I will see. Um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, to just as a reminder for anybody who might be joining the show right now, or in, in case you forgot. We are premiering right now Lewis's brand new course for Learn Squared, Dynamic, Dynamic Concept Art 1. The course is going to be coming out on the 23rd of this month, uh, November 23rd. You can get it right now in pre-order, but you can also potentially get a free copy of the course on today's show. We're actually doing a giveaway. So anybody who wants to enter this giveaway, we have one copy of the course to give away to one lucky viewer of the episode. All you have to do, as you see on screen, comment with a question about Lewis's uh, new course, his art style, his career, using the hashtag 
hashtag concept art for a chance to win. Now, um, you can actually get yourself more chances to win by continuously asking thoughtful questions. So no spamming the chat, no asking like, you know, what color is my favorite color or something like that. Uh, but you know, it's something art related. Um, if you, uh, if you do that, you'll get yourself more chances to win. You'll increase your odds of, uh, winning that giveaway. And I do want to throw in there that if you, uh, are interested in the giveaway itself, make sure you stay till the end of the episode, because that's when we're going to announce the winner. And the winner has to be present at the end in order to claim the prize. So make sure you hang out, ladies and gents. Uh, thank you for all your questions. We're, uh, we're still getting questions here. But thank you to Twin Sane Marsa product for the uh, got little uh, dab emojis in the chat there. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been, uh, you know, asking questions on the show. And I just want to throw in a thank you as well to all those people who, you know, want to watch the show without asking questions. That's totally fine, too. I hope you're enjoying the episode. I hope you're enjoying this amazing demo. To give you guys a refresher and, and just let Lewis work without me constantly asking him questions for a second. Uh, what we're doing right here is actually a, a live demo of Lewis uh, creating a new concept design in Blender using all of the workflows of the course. So um, this image that you're seeing, or th this uh, uh, thing that he's working on right here, is not even in the course. This is a totally new design that he's making right now on stream using the, the same workflows, but in a different genre. So as you guys saw in the course trailer, uh, the course trailer is very sort of sci-fi focused. And this one is in kind of like a more fantasy uh, historical setting. So Lewis really wants to show out, uh, show off how you can take the things that you learn in this course and you don't need to make something that looks just like what he made in the course. You can really adapt it into whatever sort of genre or style you feel most comfortable with. Uh, and I think that's awesome. And thank you again, Lewis, for, for yeah, doing that. You really go on the extra mile. You're making two courses. You're, you know, doing this live stream. It's awesome. <laughs> or Kavalik, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Um, so we have uh, uh, Wonderland had a great question, which you, you sort of already touched on, but I do want to just throw it in there. Uh, that you have a range of different visuals in your work, uh, and they want to know what you do to expand your visual library, uh, which you talked about a little bit. But I, I want to expand on that question a little bit by just asking, uh, what are you watching lately? What are you movies, shows, video games? What's yeah. what's inspiring you right now? Uh, in terms of shows, uh, I just finished uh, House of Dragon. Nice, um, which is very very cool. I love it. Um, I haven't finished yet uh, Ring of Power. I will at some point, maybe. Um, I'm watching as well Better Call Saul. Uh, at the moment, I really love The Breaking Bad. I think it's one of uh, the best TV series out there, especially especially for the writing, uh, stuff like that. So it's not even like a super, uh, maybe like, we'd say like concept art related. But uh, the cinematography, cinematography is something that I really, really, really love. Um, I do a lot of photography as well uh, and some kind of like photo cinematography. And so watching and studying as well movies is definitely a huge, uh, I have a huge impact of my art. Uh, I, I use a, 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 as well the, a lot the cinematographic ratio, so um, uh, 235 by one. Um, this is a ratio that I really love. Uh, I think everything while using this ratio, look cinematic. Um, but yeah, video games, uh, not that much uh, video games. I always have a kind of hard time to to enjoy video games. Um, it really depends. It's more like video games with friends, so I will play some Overwatch or stuff like that. But nice. not that much like, you know, uh, the very... I, I did Elden Ring, at least. I haven't finished it, but it was really nice to, especially like level design, stuff like that. It was really, really inspiring. Um, but yeah. I haven't finished uh, Elden Ring yet either. That's a really big game. There's yeah, a lot in that game. Too big. It's too big. <laughs> they did too much. They did too much. Well, <laughs> that's how you describe your own, uh, your own course, I guess. So maybe that's, uh, <laughs> that's the theme here today. Doing too much, but we appreciate all of it. I, I could play Elder Ring forever. This game's so good. 
Um, I, I want to throw in here one from Lucas Pacheco that we just got. Um, th this is an interesting one because we've been talking a lot about like personal work and, and things that inspire us. But uh, when you're doing client work, what kind of like uh, mindset or tips do you have for just keeping you organized and getting you to deliver something on time? Um, well, I, I'm a bit... Uh uh stress sometime and you know uh, anxiety you know so I, I will maybe work more the first day to be sure that the next day i have something really nice to show and maybe I don't work like the morning or something like that for freelance obviously um but uh other than that uh, of course like having a, a very precise workflow that you do every time for your personal project and for professional work having the same workflow will definitely help you um, so you don't rely on, uh, you know, something new. Uh, maybe the design will be new, the subject will be new, uh, the theme, uh, but the, the workflow will always stay the same. Uh, so that's a great thing. So you, you don't have, you know, uh, to undone that. Um, but yeah, client work, I mean, yeah, uh, every client is different. So every project, even like right now, from store, every project is different. Every uh, uh, supervisor is different. So it really depends, but obviously, you know, you, 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 you just may make it, you figure out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do want to throw in there too. I almost forgot. I didn't forget the low HG when, uh, when we got disconnected on the Zoom call, we were uh, asking low HG's question, uh, which is a great question. And, and thank you for sending it. Um, in terms of VR programs, what was it like when you were first getting into VR? What was kind of like the learning curve for you? And how does did it originally fit into your pipeline when you started? Um, I would say it's a bit of love and hate uh, VR <laughs> because it, in fact, VR re rely a lot on fundamentals. Uh, so I, I would say if you don't have really strong fundamentals, or you are, but it's a really great tool to learn fundamentals actually because it's sculpting. So it's a really nice way to learn. Uh, like, I mean, modeling, uh, it's very, really, really, most of the time, good modeler are good drawer because they do understand really well uh, volume and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it relies so much on fundamental that or sometimes you, the first time I was doing some random stuff, but it, it wasn't looking very great. Or, um, so I would say, like, keep practicing for sure, um, using... Uh, Using stamp as well help a lot um, because it, it, it adds like so much detail. It's like you know when you're in Photoshop and you start to try like doing like a um, uh, like a painting only with a round brush is super hard because uh, you have to define every shape and stuff like that. So if you start to use stamp and cheat a bit your way, you know have maybe some stamp that already have maybe a good uh, shape language or something like that will definitely help uh, your design. But you still have like to to have good fundamental in design, uh, knowing your big, medium, small, uh, having good ratio, um, good uh, good flow design, good read. Um, but it, it can it, it come with time, you know. It's a skill, a uh, design to practice. So yeah, I mean, I guess like any uh, any craft, definitely practice makes makes perfect. And and but, here's another uh sub oh sorry yeah uh, uh, well just yeah for, for the first time that I like I put the headset and and tried VR I was very blown away by the the efficiency and the it's really like uh, straightforward like, it's like sculpting in real life just in front of you so I mean it's really really straightforward and it's really simple to to learn and to handle uh the 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 tool are really simple and that's why it's hard actually because the tool are so simple it's almost like drawing with pen and pencil so you you, you do uh, you need to have your fundamental strong and but it's a really great way again to practice your fundamental and getting better so yeah sorry Nick. vr we're, we're selling vr headsets on the side by the way ladies and gents we're, <laughs> we're salesmen for vr no we're, we're not I, I should mention that we're not <laughs> but uh it, it is a really powerful tool it, for anybody who chooses to use it this course does give a lot of vr tips and I, I do just want to throw in there that any vr stuff that is done in the course is also doable in normal 3d software uh you know whatever kind of 3d software you guys choose um but 
as you saw in the trailer, and as you'll see when you take the course, VR can be a very powerful piece of your toolkit. Uh, Louis, is she saying, I'll take two. All right, we, we got you down. You know, come around back. We'll, we'll sell it to you out of the back of a truck. <laughs> uh, we got Marza's question from earlier. Thank you, Marza, for the question. Uh, and this is a really interesting kind of uh, design idea of like when you're doing a lot of organic shapes all together, visually, it can get very confusing sometimes. You know, if there's like so many organic shapes, it's like hard to understand what you're looking at. How do you kind of keep that balance and, you know, of having organic shapes and having things to anchor onto and look at? I think you need structure in your, um, in your composition or design um, or your set design, like your layout. Um, so maybe having like a, you know, a flat plan or um, stuff like that will definitely help. Um, and of course, uh, if you have like as well a lot of curve and organic and stuff, um, if you have to find a way that everything flow uh, nicely and nothing is you know uh, look I would say like bad to your eye, like everything should flow like uh, you know what water almost. Um, but yeah, it's definitely more harder to do like uh, organic stuff. It can be like very quickly uh, confusing and uh, um, yeah, hard to balance. But again, if you can mix it with uh, some structure and you know having very uh, clear uh, uh, foreground, midground, background uh, elements, uh, that will definitely help the, the reading of your of your image. And Zominaro just throwing in a comment there about how <laughs> you're really. Uh... You're putting this thing together so quickly. This uh, this image that we're seeing on screen is incredible. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> we have a question uh, that just recently came in, uh, which is dealt with in the uh, in the course, if I can find it. Uh, Rex Taurus's question saying, uh, "What do you think about using AI tools in concept artwork? Is it are, you know are we going to all have to learn AI at some point?" What's your opinion about the influence that it's going to have for our profession? Hey, why is uh, the famous uh, topics? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, AI hey, is definitely a powerful tool, especially I think right now, especially for um, um, ideation, ideation phase, uh, maybe generating images that um, that will help you. Like, uh, and after you can study the language from AI, AY, it's it's a lot of abstraction as well, so it's very powerful. Um, I, I don't know about the future, but uh, I remember a talk uh, from Jama um, when I was at Lightbox. He talked about AI. I don't think like people, if you don't like, you know, uh, typing prompt all, all the day on 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 you know on the on the text and um, and waiting for uh, AI to generate in your art. I mean, uh, you are not gonna do that in your future, no. Um, but I think he, we could have really nice use of AI, especially in the industry, like maybe to to cut the, the the frustration of the of the work, um, let's say like you have a painting and maybe like the client is asking like I don't know like uh, to add something, um, you could like just use a mask, uh, mask the zone you want to add the, the stuff. Like let's say the client is asking like uh, oh I want a, a car here, this rug, like a, a car in the style of Last of Us, let's say, and you you could like maybe just uh, mask the, the where the car. Uh, Will, will be in your painting and just prompt uh, I want a car in the in the style of Last of Us and pop a, a car uh, is happening in your uh, in your painting appearing in your painting and that that could be really great a really nice tool like, actually like especially for not and stuff like that it could really cut the the frustrating part of uh, of you know client and stuff like that and all the feedback and uh, so it could be nice but um, I don't think uh, tomorrow if a while like, I can produce concept art uh, at the level of our station like uh, top uh, the top level, I, I will, you know, use it. I mean, I, I don't have fun using and um, using that workflow, so I, I wouldn't use it. It's really up to what you are enjoying at the end of the day. If you enjoy like drawing and just draw, so I mean. Uh... And uh, that kind of builds on another question that, uh, if I was smart, I would have left it on my screen so I could read it uh, immediately after. But it was something about, uh, you know, when you're when you are starting a new project, do you like to build your own, always build your own assets from scratch? Or are you kind of like using kits? Or are you using kits that you previously made? 
And you kind of deal with that in the course a little bit as well. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? Uh, and that mm -hmm. is from Loey HG. Thank you, Loey HG, for your question. Thank you for the question. Um, like in Bash, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, like for now, I think for for this scene, I will I will use like a mega scan for the rock and stuff like that. Uh, thing, uh, I'm thinking it will be like in the desert or. Uh, so I will definitely use Kitbash, but the point is uh, the rock are not like the, the design of my piece. So it's fine. They are here to complete the piece and to support my, my design. And um, and yeah, so I think the it's great. Like if you want to practice composition and layer design, even like level design, you can like grab some stuff on Sketchfab and, and start... Uh, you know, and start uh, doing some cool layout design and some uh, mood uh, mood piece concept art. But in fact, like it represents ten percent of the job of the concept artist. So, if if I uh, I were you, I will start to to learn design. <laughs> it's really really important. Um, so yeah, Kitbash is definitely a great thing, especially like uh, for details stuff like that. It will it it fasten a lot the, the process. Um, but it, it should represent like a small part of your. Uh, of your actual design and work. Um, but again, it really depends. But if it's for professional work, uh, I would say that I don't care if uh, I'm using like only Kibash. If, if I have like, a, for Dr. Strange, for example, we had like to do uh, some sequence in um, in New York. We just use some Kibash from New York. Uh, we, we are not re recreating New York from scratch. So it's really up to, but for clients, of course, I think uh, you don't really care because this is more about the, the end product. Um, but as personal work, I think it's great, you know, again, if you want to stand out, maybe to create your own design, your own stuff, because I think there is a lot of students who can fall into the trap of, you know, just grabbing some kit batch and starting to uh, do some composition. But, you know, there are a lot of people doing the same. So um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it. It's about the intention and it's about what actually matters to the piece and what matters to you as an artist. Yeah, as well, yeah. Um, so we have a few, again, thank you everybody for these amazing questions. We have like a lot of questions. I do want to just throw in there that, uh, of course, we can't necessarily get to every question, but you are being entered in the contest, even if we don't ask your question, as long as it's, you know, a appropriate question like a thoughtful question that's like on topic you are being entered into the giveaway even if we don't ask your question and i just want to say thank you to everybody who's participating uh in this giveaway i hope you guys it sounds like everybody's really excited about the course i i i'm really glad to see that um so i want to throw in there a question about that i saw a second ago oh so this is kind of a general one that I, I really like because it's it can go in any direction. Sunstrom Sharam saying, very simple, what's your ultimate goal as an artist? And then they send a little kiss in addition to that. <laughs> thank you for your question. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, um, for now, uh, creating my concept <laughs> on screen. I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't really think that much about, you know, uh, just having fun, honestly, like, it's just, I just enjoy uh, making concept art and doing design with my little world, like almost as a kid, you know. I don't really care, like uh, having fun. Maybe, uh, maybe like uh, in five, ten years, when I will be older, like uh, I will be thinking about the purpose of my life and uh, what I'm doing my, with my life. What should I say to the world? Stuff like that, you know. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking uh, I'm too young, I'm too young to to think about that. Yeah, one, one at a time, one, one picture at a time. Yeah, exactly. So, and thank you again, Sunstrom Sharam, for your question. Um, there's another really good one that's kind of in the same vein that uh, I think you are old enough to answer, let's say. Twin Sane 8 saying, looking back, is there anything you wish you knew when you were starting out in the industry? So looking in, in the past mm -hmm. instead of in the future. Yeah, I think what helps me uh, a lot um is actually learning to learn uh, rather than learning uh, any fundamental or stuff like that. I think it's even more important because at the moment you learn the mechanic of learning, you can really learn anything in life and do anything with your life and really believe in that. 
Um, I'm blindly confident that if you really know how to learn and the mechanic behind, you can really do anything in life. Um, and learning to learn, yeah, is um, I have like actually two books to recommend uh, for that, uh, that I, I recommend to everyone and to all my friends because they, they really changed my life uh, on, and like uh, my perception on learning. Um, the first one is um, The Art of Learning. Um, actually, it's uh, Matle Kushala that um, uh, recommend this book in one of the art, ca art cafe. And so the first one is um, The Art of Learning from um, Josh uh, Wed Wedzekin. It's quite complicated to, uh, uh, to pronounce. Uh, he, he was an uh, ancient uh, chess master. And he, he like he mastered different areas like even art, art martial and uh, different stuff, and to a very very good level like almost to the to the top each time. And so he he's coming back like to um, and how you know he learned stuff and um, everything. And the second one is Mastery from uh, George Leonard, which again is a good complete completion of the art of learning. I think both books are really uh, good. So, so yeah, I, I would say like uh, we should like even in school like uh, learning to learn like uh, so so important like it's uh... and as an artist I think like I, I did the quite a good pass because I started with the fundamentals like for one year in art school uh, we were doing like only uh, you know um, still life drawing figure drawing stuff like that so I think it's really important to to go through that. And then you know, learning to design, and then the the techniques and the, the actual software. Uh, so yeah, le learning to learn the the, the earlier uh, as possible in my life. All right, you heard it here, ladies and gents. And I, I want to throw in there too that I uh, read Mastery from your recommendation, and it it was really good. Very, very yes. inspired. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, uh, it's very really great because he, as well, he, he compared like to a lifetime. Uh, he's speaking about his life, but the guy is old. So you have this very uh, macro uh, vision and learning. And so, you yeah, know, it's really great. It's a really great book. Yeah, it's sometimes it's not really about learning how to do a specific exact thing. It's about learning how to be more present and how to actually learning how to learn. Yeah, like you like you were saying, like really understanding what it is to uh, to become good at a subject and not just focus on the goal itself. Uh, yeah. Wonderland is saying who's the author of Mastery. So that's uh, George Leonard is the uh, author of Mastery. It's a yeah. certified recommend. <laughs> so um, we have a, another question here. And again, let me know if I'm going too fast with the questions, if you want to break uh, from the questions, Louis. No, no, I'm fine. Go ahead. So uh, these are proper nouns that I don't understand, but I assume you would. Wonderland asking, how reliant are you on quick tools for modeling? Do you yeah. also use box cutter or any other add-ons for hard surface stuff? Um, I'm using uh, the quick tools, yeah, um, especially quick shape. And no, I'm just using uh, quick tools, in fact. Uh, it's really nice uh, add-on because um, it's really similar to um, to 3D code workflow almost. So, so yeah, it's really nice tool. Um, uh, quick tools, and then uh, in terms of add-on, I'm using, I should have put that at the beginning. That's fine. Um, quick deform as well, quick curve, quick curve, uh, botanic. Uh, Asset manager is for like having all the assets in the course that you will have as well, like the character, uh, you will have that, uh, everything that I build. Uh, photographer is for the, um, the managing the camera. And you have like, if you know some camera uh, stuff, like you have different camera, uh, your lenses, so it's really uh, convenient. And that's pretty much it, honestly. I don't use, and physical atmosphere yeah, uh, as well. So it's for the lighting. All right. Here's your answer. Uh, thank you again for the question. Um, so uh, Wonderland asking, when you're doing your modeling and sculpting, do you prefer doing it in Blender? Uh, you know, how much of it do you like to do in VR? 
And that's an interesting conversation that we had, uh, you know, in, in putting the course together and kind of talking about to what level are you finishing the modeling process in VR versus just taking it to Blender and, you know, finishing it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, VR most of the time has sketch in VR. Like I, I don't go that far. Um, but and then I, I will like refine, um, I will refine inside uh, inside Blender, like adding the displacement and stuff like that. Um, but it's still very sketchy. The goal of VR is really to to find ideas and really cool and unique uh, design. And to be honest, like a lot of my design are from VR, and I think I I, I would not like have made them uh, without VR. So for me, it's a really important tool, uh, especially for design. Yeah. All right, and uh, guys, just for anybody who is uh, just joining the show, what we're doing right here is a, a first ever look at Louis Laurent's new Learn Squared course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. This course is coming out very soon on uh, November 23rd. And you can actually pre-order it right now. It's it's up on the site for pre-order. You can go to learnsquared.com slash Lewis. And if I was smart, I would have posted that in the chat. You can, of course, get it in the uh, in the description of the video as well. Uh, you guys can pre-order the course right now. The Black Friday sale price is already live. So you don't have to wait until Black Friday. The, this course is actually already on a Black Friday discount starting now. So jump in whenever you feel like it. Um, there's a whole lot of content in this brand new course. And uh, if you want to get in on the giveaway that we're doing during today's demo, I'll, I'll throw up the graphic here for the giveaway. You guys can uh, ask any sort of art related question to Lewis uh, about his career, his art style, or about the new course itself, what's going to be in it, uh, what's going to be covered, that kind of stuff. Anything you want to know, as long as you use the hashtag concept art in that question, you will be entered uh, for a chance to win the uh, copy of the course that we're giving away on today's show. So um, yeah, get your questions in there. I just want to throw in there as well. Once again, you know, there's a bunch of questions and, and they're all amazing questions. Thank you guys so much for posting them. Thank you for your excitement about the, the course and about Lewis's work. Um, even if I don't ask the question that you asked on the stream, as long as it was a on topic question, it is entered in the contest, even if it's not asked on the live broadcast. So uh, to give Lewis a second uh, and a, a chance to keep working here uh, without me, you know, asking him stuff all the time and making him split his uh, attention, we're going to throw it to the trailer one more time. So maybe for anybody who hasn't seen it, or if you just want to get even more hyped about the course, we're going to watch the trailer one more time, ladies and gents. Take a look, enjoy, and hang tight because we are going to be doing more live demonstrations after the trailer. All right. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Louis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Lewis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well, from this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users coming out next year. So you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com.
ladies and gents, a brand new course and a promise of another course coming out. Well, what could be better than that? It's like, you know, you're getting two holiday presents at the same time here. Uh, Louis Laurent's new course, Dynamic Concept Art 1, coming out uh, November 23rd. That's a mere 12 days from now, guys. That's very fast. Um, the Black Friday sale is already in effect for that specific course. So if you want to pre-order it now, you can do so, you know, with a clear conscience, clear mind, knowing that you don't have to wait till Black Friday for that one. Uh, and as a reminder, we are doing a giveaway for the course on today's episode. So if you want to be entered in that giveaway, all you have to do is post a comment in the YouTube chat asking uh, about Lewis's, uh, the new course, what's in it, his career, his art style, any, you know, related art question with the hashtag concept art, uh, and you'll be entered into the contest uh, for a chance to win. I do want to throw in there as well. Uh, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I'll just say it again. In order to actually win, the winner has to be here at the end of the episode to claim their prize. So make sure you stick around. That'll, of course, give you you know, be able to watch more of this amazing live demo that Lewis is doing, and you'll be able to ask more questions because every time you ask a question, you're gaining another chance to win. So you're actually increasing your odds the more questions you ask, as long as they're not spammed in the chat or as long as they're not, like, unrelated. They got to be thoughtful, you know, reasonably paced questions. <laughs> but uh, good luck to everybody watching, and again, thank you for everybody's... Uh, support and love. It's, we, we really appreciate how excited everybody is about the course. Um, and, and again, just a big thanks to Lewis. Can we, can we show some love in that chat for Lewis, who's out here not only creating two amazing courses, but also doing this awesome live demo that we've been watching. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you guys for having me. The, uh, what you're seeing here on screen is uh, just while Lewis gets some stuff set up on his computer, and you can let me know, uh, Lewis, when that's all when that's all good. But what we're looking at here on the screen are some of the finished images from this course that we're talking about today. So, in total, Lewis actually delivered four separate images for the uh, for the course, all in the same universe. Uh, and as you can see, they're just just gorgeous, you know, <laughs> sci-fi, you know, all these sort of amazing abstract shapes combined with all this amazing sci-fi stuff it's it's really something guys you, you're gonna love this course when you see it i'm sure you can already tell how great it is just by watching uh this stuff watching his demo and watching the trailer uh and thank you guys for the love we got a lot of love in here silo uh with that hashtag love holden with the hearts uh tengai mac uh, with the hashtag love remus marza uh art junior thank you guys for the for the love in that chat. We, we really appreciate it. And yeah, just amazing stuff, Lewis. Thank you. I, I'm, thank I'm you posting again. some love verbally here as well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nick. Uh, we can come back to the demo show. All right, let's do it. So as you're seeing here, this is uh, the uh, Blender project that Lewis has been working on on today's show. One of the interesting things that I that I should mention as well is you are very um, interested in kind of taking assets and reusing them in interesting ways. So like um, what we were talking about before the show, and I'm not sure whether or not you did it. I, I wasn't like scoping out to see if it happened or not, but are there any assets from the course that you kind of repurposed in this? Uh, not yet, but I, I will like to populate the scene and yeah, for some stuff, yeah, I will like uh, some rock and stuff like that. So, but, yeah, you go, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so just for anybody who, you know, you guys just watch the trailer, of course, the trailer, the, the content from the course itself is very different than, than what you're looking at here. You know, this is sort of like a more historical, you know, fantasy kind of setting. Whereas the um, the trailer itself is a lot more kind of ecological, like in a, a sci-fi jungle, uh, you know, science fiction focused um, uh, idea. So Lewis is really giving you an idea of how you can take what you've learned in the course and just apply it to whatever sort of style 
works for you, you know, whatever genre you feel comfortable with. And I mentioned this on the show before, but I think it's just really important to keep bringing up for anybody who might just be joining uh, that that is a very kind of important aspect of this course and an important aspect of Learn Squared in general. We, we like to say that it's not really about tutorials. Um, you know, we're not really teaching you like step by step, like, you know, press this button to do this in Blender plus, you know, it's not like a Blender how to use Blender course. There are aspects of like, here's what I do in Blender, here's what I recommend. But it's really about, just like the books that uh, Lewis was talking about that he recommends to you guys, it's about getting in the head of the artist, you know, and actually learning to think like they do and learning to solve problems like they do. I think that is the most important, you know, part of taking a course like this. And, and th what you're seeing on screen is a great example of it, where he's using the same workflows that are in the course to create something that looks totally different from what the course looks like. So we do have more questions coming in, and thank you again, guys, for these uh, these questions. So we have uh, Marza saying, oh, and thank you, Marza. Y yes, I saw your question earlier, and I will ask it now, uh, talking about sort of like utilizing depth and scale in your image is a really interesting subject, you know, mm -hmm. when you're using focal lengths or just big, medium, small uh, comparisons, like like what you're doing right now, for example. Uh, how important is that to you when designing? Um, scale is super important, I would say, like, um... Especially for the first of all, for the feeling, you know, uh, as a viewer, when you look at the image, we want to feel like the scale. And for example, the big temple behind, I really want to like to feel very um, huge compared like to this maybe little house. Um, so there is multiple ways to to sell the scale. Uh, first is to repeat the same shape again and again, the same um, in the perspective, and obviously having a human figure. So this human figure, as you can see, it get like a weapon. It's like military equipment, but it's it just an, um, an um, I would say, um, a simple piece that, that I will delete and photobash like a, a more um, a fantasy character because I don't have like fantasy character in 3D. Um, but yeah, yeah, scale is super important. Uh, definitely, like uh, I think it's what sells as well the the epicness of an image. If you look at the, for example, Porsche Edison work is like awesome. I think he's a master of selling the scale. And he's, he's, he... Oh, so that's uh, Lewis's Zoom call cutting out. We're, uh, <laughs> I probably should have logged into a Zoom account that has the access to like not have a timer on the calls. But uh, I'm going to get him back onto the call here. Uh, and so while we do that, uh, again, thank you for the question. Uh, to Marza, he's going to continue answering that when he gets back on the Zoom call, and uh, you know we're going to throw it to the trailer while I get him back on here. So I know you guys just watched it, but I hope you enjoyed it enough to watch it again. And of course, hang tight in the stream because at the end of the show, which as you can see from the design, we're getting further and further into the progress of this thing. Uh, at once the show is over, we're going to announce the winner, and uh, we're going to give away a copy of the course to one lucky viewer on today's show. So make sure you guys are here for that. The winner actually does have to be present at the end of the episode when we announce their name so that they can claim their prize. So stay tuned, enjoy the trailer, get yourselves a drink if you're, uh, you know, maybe if you wanna take a break, go uh, stretch your legs and we'll see you in just a second with more designing. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Louis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Louis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well. From this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, 
where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users coming out next year so you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com. All right, guys, you saw it again. <laughs> trailer for Lewis's brand new course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. It's coming out once again, November 23rd. And uh, you can rest assured that on the pre-order page, the Black Friday sale is already in effect for this course. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to, you know, hang out, hang out until Black Friday saying like, oh, I'm going to wait until it goes on sale. Already on sale. So uh, that's, that's pretty nice if you ask me. Uh, Lewis is back on the call here. Thank you again, Lewis. Welcome back to the, the uh, stream. I think we have um, him on the call. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I was uh, thinking. Uh, yes, thank you for having me. Uh, always uh, an honor to be, at, be here, trying to do my best with the demo. <laughs> and you are certainly doing more than your best. This is amazing stuff. We're going to jump back uh, yeah. into, the, uh, in, into what Lewis is looking at on his screen here. Just as a reminder for students, who uh, are just joining the show, what we're doing here is uh, not only a premiere of Lewis's brand new course, which you just saw the trailer for a second ago, but Lewis is actually also doing a totally new concept design using the, um, using the techniques that are featured in the course. So uh, what you're seeing on screen here is a design that it does isn't even in the course. This is totally new. It's being designed right now live on the stream. And uh, not only that, but it's if you were watching the trailer, uh, you notice that the trailer is like a sort of a nature focused uh, sci fi with like weird sci fi uh, plants and everything. And as you're seeing here, this is more like uh, I think you're saying you're going to make it more like desert ish mm -hmm. Lewis, right? And yeah. it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, more historical fantasy kind of setting. So um, what we thought was really cool is that th this is going to be able to show you guys to anybody who is, uh, you know, feeling like, oh, man, like if I get this course, I'll only be able to make a picture that looks like the picture Lewis made. But as you can see in this video, using the same exact techniques, you can make something totally different. And it's important to point out, I know I've mentioned it a few times, but it can be a sticking point sometimes for people, you know, like, oh, does what kind of t uh, software is he using? Like, do I need to have that software? You know, I don't like whatever, you know, X, Y, or Z software he's using. Uh, in the course, uh, you guys saw in the trailer that Lewis's uh, preferred sketching method is in Blender, or rather in VR. But as you see here, uh, this is being done in Blender. And, you know, the, the lessons from the course can really apply to any software that you choose if you uh, want to do any type of 3D software for your stuff. So uh, not only that, but uh, Lewis actually does specifically go out of his way for every sketching part of the course where he does it in VR. He also does another video showing how to do the exact same thing in traditional 3D software, which I, I just think is amazing. Thank you for doing that, Lewis. <laughs> That's not normal for the people who don't have VR. Uh, There's something almost similar, but of course it's not... Uh as efficient and as straightforward as VR, and as fun, <laughs> because it's very funny actually to, to do VR. One of the things that's like a really good um, example that you use in the course is, uh, it, we were both talking about this uh, when we were sort of developing the course, like VR is a tool in the sense that it, if you were trying to learn how to draw a picture and you watch a person drawing on pen and paper, but you were planning to use, you know, a Wacom tablet and, you know, Photoshop, 
you wouldn't say like, oh, I can't watch this person draw on pen and paper. You know, it's mm -hmm. not the software I use. It's like, no, you, you know, it still applies. It's the same exact thought process is the same exact, uh, you know, methodology. And uh, that, that's the way that we think about it with VR versus 3D software like Blender. Uh, you know, it's the same, it's the same fundamentals, no matter which one you're using. Um, so uh, again, thank you to everybody who's posting all this love in the chat. We got a couple more, more really good questions. So again, thank you guys. I I'm trying my best to get to all these, uh, questions without kind of making, uh, <laughs> you know, o overloading Lewis here, <laughs> but, uh, I, I do appreciate this uh, comment from Sunstrom Sar Sharam saying, uh, the course trailer is the only brainwash that I love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I watched it like. 10 times I think today just because it gives me so so much feels like uh it's awesome the world you, you did I think it's really nice oh I'm really I'm glad you like it I'm glad I could, could make a thing like the, the end product after all the efforts is really something it's uh going through the course and just watching you work has been a real privilege to for me so thank you okay. <laughs> um so we have uh a bunch of great questions and I, I guess I'll go to kind of a um, a, a simple one that we uh, just got that you know it could be a quick answer it could be a long answer whichever you prefer uh, Louis HD saying what cinematographers inspire you and and what are some of your favorite films um, photographers um, Daniel Cordon is a big one um... Um, Emmanuel Liboski, which is a cinematographer of yeah. uh, The Revenant and uh, uh, Birdman, Gravity, so so many good movies, and I really really love uh, his way of cinematography, especially that he's using wide wide lens. Uh, wide lens is really hard to to master and to to photo photography with, but I, I really love uh, wide lens as well. It's my favorite lens. Um, and my favorite movies, uh, it's really hard, <laughs> that one. I don't have like one favorite movie, I would say. But most of the time, a great movie with really great uh, cinematography, like The Revenant, I think is one of my favorite for that, for the cinematography quality. Um, it's like almost uh, looking at pictures and moving, you know, it's really, really beautiful. So, yeah. Um, so, Marza, good, good point. Uh, write the names in the chat so we can search them. Uh, so we'll we'll do you one better. We'll we'll uh, we'll post it uh, after the fact. Uh, in I guess we'll do it on our Instagram with uh, some of Lewis's kind of. Uh, we'll do like a proper post about like his inspirations, so you guys can, you know, do it at your own pace, and you don't have to do it like during the during the episode. But good suggestion, and thank you for that, uh, and thank you, Lewis, for uh, for sharing some of the recommendations of the masters with us. Um, so we have some interesting questions about, uh, you know, kind of like work-life balance and stuff like that. Like there's actually a, a really uh, kind of a difficult thing to address sometimes. But so, for example, uh, uh, Remas saying concept art can sometimes make it uh, hard to focus on daily life. Like maybe if you work too much uh or if you're uh you know kind of not working enough and and you know how do you strike that balance and i just want to combine that with art junior's question from earlier about uh also balancing between professional and personal work which is another great uh question uh yeah it's definitely super hard especially uh it's an uh, industry that there is a lot of competition in a way like uh everyone is learning all the time and posting their stuff, you know, so definitely it's very hard to to step back. You can start to get addict at some point as well to work. And But I, I think I really work super hard to get in the industry. Now that I, I'm, I'm in the industry, I would say that I work w w w less. Um, I still do like personal project, uh, stuff like that, but uh, I, I won't force it. Like if I have no creativity or I don't, I'm not inspired or stuff like that. I, I, I won't force it. Um, so I have more time for me. Like I can do sports, uh, hang out with friends, uh, you know, 
uh, get drunk in club, stuff like that. <laughs> but before that, when I was learning and I really wanted like to get into the industry, to be honest, I was like working a 16 hour a day. I mean, that's sadly, it was like uh, my way of dealing with it. Like, you know, I really wanted it. So I really worked very hard. But mm, it's very unhealthy and uh, we don't like, you know, uh, advise you to do that i think it's better to maybe just have a normal um, day of work and then you know uh see some friends do something outside it's definitely more healthy but if you want to grind i think you you can have like maybe to to grow this kind of period where to you you, you go a bit crazy and are, work very hard yeah and there's other uh artists who i've heard of who do kind of uh who want to grind but kind of put a cap on it because like you're saying where you, you don't necessarily want to do that like unregulated and just like send you know do it in such a way that is destructive to your to your life uh you know certain artists would say like oh well i'm gonna grind like this for a set amount of time and after that point like i'll kind of cool down or something like that. Like it's always good to keep limits in mind. Uh, you know, if you're doing something like that, it, take care of yourselves, guys. That's what, you know, that's what we're trying to say. <laughs> take yeah, care of yourselves. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't burn out uh, before, uh, before getting to the industry. It happens. I have some friends that they, they, they got so crazy on, on, on it and, you know, they, they burn out uh, before achieving their, their goal. So it's a bit sad because they, they gave up and maybe spend a year not doing anything and, you know, it's a bit sad. And they have the potential, you know, to, to get the work and everything. So. so you have moved on to the next sort of phase of the, uh, of the project in Blender here. You want to just talk a little bit about, uh, you know, this step and, and what you're going for? Shit, I moved my camera. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, wait, I need to look. Yeah. Artist problems, uh, ladies and gents. <laughs> yeah, daily problems. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, all the same time, moving your camera. Um, yeah, so I just quickly like um, did my lighting with the physical atmosphere. Um, so I'm really looking for shape and having something that is clear to read. Um, I'm still not sure with uh, the big shape uh, behind. I think it's because of that. Uh, I should change it. So yeah, composition is a lot of, you know, back and forth between different areas. Um, let's hide that as well. And so um, when I I'm will be happy with the lighting and the layout design overall, I will really go into the, the texturing. Um, and so the texturing will be quite simple because it will be in, in the desert. So there is a high chance that the metal of the temple will be almost like sandy and you know sandstone, a bit similar. So most of the time I do my lighting when I'm happy with the lighting. Or sometimes I will do like, if I do the kit bash, like in the course, uh, we do the texturing before doing the set design and the and the lighting and uh, the composition. So it's even more funnier because, you know, you have everything ready. You just have to kit bash and have fun with your, uh, with your layout. But yeah, in terms of composition, um, I think I really want to have like, right, this is flying. I have this little uh, structure. Um, I, I think I won't have the time if I have more time to push it. I, I will like maybe destroy some stuff and have some sand like, you know, uh, uh, going down, um, falling. Uh, in terms of composition, so we have our focal point, which is this, the entrance. Um, I imagine like maybe having like, you know, uh, a character maybe uh, standing here. And maybe we will have like maybe character around. Uh, maybe it could be a, as well as some kind of marketplace. So maybe we could have like opening there and with some cloth and tents and a lot of stuff happening. So this is a, a lot of stuff that I will be doing maybe in Photobash. Um, same here. Uh, so our focal point is here. Um, so the goal is to have uh, everything in the composition uh, to support our focal point. So if I'm placing like the character, I would try to create this kind of movement where it goes to the to the focal point. Same with my rocks. Um, I think it, it needs a bit more love and um, design, but I would start to create this kind of shape, a triangle shape, pointing again to the focal point. 
Um, same, I try to create this kind of movement, um, pointing to the focal point. Um, here, I will put maybe some column and maybe a blocker, like a big rock at the top to block the eye to not go too much there and really uh, stay in the image here. And more on the left side of the composition, um, we have a lot of really nice round shape uh, that is very pleasing to the eye. Uh, again, pushing to the focal point, the repeating shape here uh, of the colon. I could do like, some kind of a straight line uh, that push to the focal point. Uh, every, uh, it's basically everything you, you can think about in your composition layout should like really support your focal point. And this is like maybe um, an area where the, the character could enter from here and they could enter maybe from uh, um, beneath, uh, from the lower point. And so this is very nice because it creates as well a nice sense of, um, you know, you have different level inside your, um, in your uh, in your layout, in your level design. So even like for video games, it's really interesting. You know, the, the player could uh, uh, entry in different points. Uh, it's more interesting. And at the same time, you know, everything is not on a flat surface. We have this kind of uh, rhythm happening in the image. So again, if we look like as a as a dune, it's pointing to uh, to the top. Uh, so I really try like to have everything uh, pointing to the to the focal point. And so for the lighting, it's um, it's almost the same. We, uh, I, I would say lighting is is a greater as well to push your focal point, but to I will focus more on the readability of the image. So I want everything to be readable and clear. Um, so here we have like a, a nice difference of. Um, Oh, sorry, I launched the render. We have a nice difference of, um, you know, uh, light shape versus dark versus light. Maybe I could like uh, paint that in dark. Um, same here, even like the entrance is uh, creating a dark shape that push toward the focal point. Um, maybe here I could like uh, let uh, a square of sky um, with even like this little line and this really white square of sky could push even in the in the frame. And we have a nice rhythm with all this little round in selling uh, the scale as well. We have this big medium round, the big one uh, behind, um, and we have this little one uh, happening as well in the image. So maybe duplicating them uh, around the image. It gives as well nice uh, shadow shape uh, on the ground and this, you know, um, selling the form of the ground and the, how, how this uh, stuff look. Um, so yeah, and then same here, we have like, uh, maybe in painting af after, you know, um, I, I won't like do the full demo of painting, but I will try as well to, to think how I could like uh, paint over later on the image. So um, I, I still want to design my, my light shape and shadow shape already in 3D. So I can like, uh, it's, it will be easier for me. So I will maybe simplify, you know, all this shape and flatten everything. So we have a nice shape like that. Um, so, so yeah, I think that, for example, for, as a note, uh, I would maybe love to have more light happening here uh, behind, but this is some stuff that I could shoot in, in, in 2D. So um, don't, don't over, um, maybe overwork in, uh, in, in 3D because there is a lot of stuff that uh, you are going to actually to clean in 2D. Um, so it's always a uh, balance between uh, how much you can do and how much time it takes. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting point to touch on as well like different artists definitely have different uh levels of completion that they like to do in their 3d versus in their paint over afterwards uh you know can you kind of talk about like what is your usual you know stopping point how do you know when it's like okay well i'll just do that in 2d now um it, it really depends uh most of the time when i start um um, a painting, I'm already thinking if I'm going to do 80% in 3D or 80% in 2D. Uh, it really depends on the and the task as well on the um, on my confidence on my ability to do it uh, in 2D. Um, but yeah, it's I think with experiences and doing a lot of different projects, at some point you you start to feel okay, like right there I could like jump into. Uh, into uh, in 2D maybe, and I could like make it uh, look very nice. Uh, so I think with time definitely and experiences and training like, uh, even like sometimes a great exercise will be like 
to take only like a white shaded uh, render and do the paint over. It's really hard, but you know, and sometimes in video games, they give you only like the level design in gray shade and you have like to paint everything in, in nicely uh, realist way. So uh, talking about some of the ways that you come up with ideas in general, there was a couple questions uh, in the chat uh, and thank you to uh, a few people who asked it, Wonderland talking about it. Uh, we had a, a few others as well, Art Junyent as well, uh, asking about this, talking about how you like to sketch and, and come up with ideas. Uh, we've discussed a few of the uh, sketching methods that are featured in the course, you know, VR, sketching in Blender. Do you like to sketch in a sketchbook? Do you use uh, Photoshop and like a tablet? What are some of your preferred sketching methods? Um, I, I do sketch not as uh, often that I, I should do, <laughs> but um, I do a lot uh, of sticky notes uh, drawing. So basically, I, I, I take a sticky note, I all, all, all the time sticky note with me, with a pen. And every time like I got an idea, I will um, sketch like a really simple uh, drawing, like 15 seconds. But the importance is the, the action of doing this drawing will... Um, we create like a memory in your head and each time you will see again this ring you, you will remember what you were thinking about uh, at that time so i think it's a really really powerful tool to just you know uh, have and be able to just have really simple sticky note like that and you know it's uh, it's like you, you are saving this memory in your head and it's a rip off you could do use with um with uh, writing you know as well um if you wrote some words uh equal uh, worked as well i want to just throw it uh in, in the chat lowy hg saying not sure i can stay awake any longer but thank you for the demo i want to say a big thanks to lowy hg for hanging out on today's show and asking a lot of excellent questions um can we get a you know a little bit of love in the chat for lowy hg for hanging out uh who's so is much. saying goodbye thank you lowy hg uh for for being a part of today's show uh, Matthew Ogram had a good question from earlier uh, that I'm finally getting to here. Thank you, Matthew, for the question. Uh, what does dynamic mean to you with regards to visual storytelling and concept art? It, you know, and I, I'll just add to that a little bit by saying, how do you keep a picture visually interesting? You know, when you start to make it. Sorry, you are gonna maybe to hear a bit my computer was a fan. Um... Dynamic, uh, well, dynamic, I would say, yeah, it's more about the style of uh, of the techniques and how how I managed to to create. Um, because again, it, it relies a lot on you know my instinct and um, uh, it, it, most of the time my idea change a lot um, while during the process. So nothing is completely you know uh, um, stay in the same place. Um, at the same time, the workflow is very, you know, like I'm spending in Blender, but I won't spend like maybe, uh, you know, 10 hours on this image. I, I will be like, in a normal day, I will have finished the keyframe at the end of my day, for sure. Um, so I would say it's dynamic because I'm not spending like five days on one image. Um, and at the same time, uh, I try to go to be very efficient in my way of working as well. Um, so we have a couple of, uh, first of all, before we get back to the questions, thank you everybody for sending that love for Louis HG. Thank you again, Louis HG for being a part of the show and good night to you. Um, just talking about, uh, before we jump into like more questions, thank you to everybody for, you know, the questions you've done. We still have a bunch in the backlog that I need to get to, uh, here. I do just want to remind you guys that, uh, for anybody who's maybe just joining the show, what we're doing here today is we're premiering Louis Laurent's brand new Learn Squared course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. This is coming out very soon, November 23rd. So it's 11, uh, 12 days from now. I could do math. 12 days from now, the course is coming out. The Black Friday pricing is already in effect. So you can pre-order the course right now. The Black Friday pricing is already live. So you don't need to like wait until Black Friday to get it. 
you, you can rest assured that you're already getting the sale price, uh, even if you get it now. Uh, Lewis is actually doing a live demonstration of a brand new concept design, a concept design that's not even in the course, uh, which is uh, you know showing off how to use the course's techniques to create a totally different type of image. So you can see here, this is like a desert, uh, a desert image in kind of like a historical or fantasy setting. Uh, and in the course itself, the, the main picture that he's making is a science fiction, you know, like uh, uh, scouts landing on an alien planet. So totally different type of imagery uh, that he's doing, sort of just exemplifying the fact that you can really use the teachings of the course to make whatever kind of genre or, or style works for you. So, uh, you know, once again, thanks to Lewis for, for going the extra mile. <laughs> Really, thank you. Um, now, anybody who wants to get in on the giveaway that we're doing during today's show, I'll throw up this graphic one more time. Uh, as you guys can see, we're getting pretty far along in the picture, so make sure you guys get your uh, questions in. Lewis, uh, Lewis's course, we're giving away one copy of the course to a lucky viewer on today's show. All you got to do to enter is post in the YouTube chat. Uh, with a question about Lewis's new course, his art style, his career, any, you know, sort of appropriate art related question that you have and use the hashtag concept art uh, in that question in the YouTube chat for a chance to win a copy. Now, um, the more questions you ask, you, you can have more than one entry. So you'll like increase your chances to win. Uh, if you ask more than one question, we do just request that you not spam questions. Uh, of course, that's going to, you know, it's not going to turn out well for you. Uh, and, you know, make sure that they're on topic, uh, thoughtful, you know, be reasonable. I, I, I want to say, by the way, that I'm very impressed. Everybody in uh, the chat today has been very, very civil and everyone's <laughs> had great questions. You don't always know on the Internet. You know what I mean? Like it, <laughs> it, the Internet's a weird place sometimes. Um, but some little trolls. Yeah, thank you everybody for being awesome on, on yes, the stream. Thank today. you guys for the question, everything. I'm really pr um, proud and honored to be to be here and showing you uh, humbly my, my work and my, my try. <laughs> and we're honored to have you once again. Uh, so I'm going to jump into more questions here. I, we have one that just came in actually from Twinsane8. Uh, so thank you uh, for this question, Twinsane8. Um, do you ever give your 3D files to your clients or is it just about the final image? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, client love, love 3D. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's almost mandatory, you know, in the, in the industry. Um, if you can show them, uh, an, a final painting, uh, beautiful, they love it. They love the moon. They love the, the design, the concept, everything. And then when they ask you, do you have the 3D and you say, yes, they are super happy. They are you you make their you make their day because really you are saving them so much money you are going going to give them the, the model they are going to use the model as a as a base for the 3d guy the modeler the texture you have a, you have even the texture already made uh, i mean you have done so much work for them already so yeah definitely 3d like it happens all the time uh we, 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 even at work, we try to do the, the 3D part because it's more convenient for the team. We know that uh, the team love to, uh, the other guy in other department, you are basically helping them. So there you go. Yeah, it's, you know, providing value, right? You're, you're giving them yeah. something that's yeah, going to yeah, help it's, them. It's all about value because, you no, know, we all the time saw like the nice picture on, on our station and stuff like that. But when you're at, at work, you are here to, I mean, to help the other and to to make the project uh, work. So we are not uh, all here to, to make beautiful image or stuff like that. We are here to solve problems and help uh, everyone in order to make the project project come true. And and just building off of that uh, question and answered, once again, thank you to Insane 8 for the excellent question. Uh, to build off of that, what what kind of stuff are you doing to you know, are you sort of like tidying up your 3D files before you send it? Like what, what sort of things do you want to make sure are all in order before you give the client that file? 
Um, yeah, I, I would try to organize. But sometimes they don't ask the files. They ask like only the FBX or ABC files, stuff like that. You can give them like, I could have select everything like that and just, you know, export everything and they will still be happy. Um, it really depends. Sometimes it's, it's, if I have the time for the other department, I will, you know, organize everything um, in a good way. So it's easy easier for them like to look through the scene and to understand everything. But sometimes they just want like a big FBX file and that's it, you know. So yeah. Yeah, I guess it depends. It depends on the people, on the clients. And, and uh, John Davila also has a great question. But sorry, I'm asking all these questions that are just recently sent, and uh, you know there are other questions right, in the fine. backlog. But we'll get to you guys. Uh, and thank you to everybody who's sending them. But John Davila's question: Do you prefer to work remotely or in a physical studio? Um. Actually, at Framestore, we work a lot uh, remotely um, still. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm fine, you know, working remotely because, uh, you know, you have time for you and, uh, you know, it, it's better when, especially like between, you don't have like to commute um, to 12 hours, stuff like that. Uh, so it's definitely a, a plus on that. Uh, I would say like the downside, uh, the don yeah, the downside is to uh, you are uh, at home, so you are not like uh, uh, with other people sharing. Um, but uh, I would say like uh, uh, um, I've changed my mind on that because now uh, it forced myself to do extra activity outside the work, you know. So I do some sport, I hang out way more often with my friend. Um, so yeah. Honestly, it's almost a plus, but it really depends on the people because I have other people, you know, on the team that um, really love to be uh, at work and they really uh, want to disconnect their their home from their work. So again, this kind of stuff it really depends on the different characters uh, of people. Um, th this is another question, sort of just building on on that. I I'm sure a lot of artists are interested to know, just for you personally. In an average uh, work week, this question is from Marza, by the way. Thank you, for uh, Marza, for the question. Uh, in an average work week, how many images would you say that you produce? Uh, or how many images would you uh, work on? Um, it really depends on the project uh, for, for the work uh, aspect. Um, I would say like the maximum that I did, it was on Dr. Strange, but it was very tight and like people were a bit crazy. It was like, uh, we had like to deliver the, the film very quickly, but we had to finish at the same time. So it was really hard. And I think uh, the maximum that I did, it was, but again, it's not the, the majority of the time. I did like eight in one day, wow. uh, eight keyframe, but it was almost the same um, environment. But it was like, if I were like doing like different composition with the same assets, but it was eight different keyframes. It was a bit crazy in terms of time, it, et cetera, but it was very, you know, uh, stressful. But the project was very cool and, you know, um, the superior as well. So it was really nice to, to do that. But I would say, like, in general, it's at the end of your day, you have to, to have something to, to show, you know. So most of the time in film, at the end of your day, you have to, you, you have to update and show that you, you are working and everything is, you know, going forward. And, um, and per personally, uh, like for this email, if I had like eight, eight hour in eight hour, I will be you know finished. Um, like the three D is almost done. Um, but yeah, I will like maybe spend like one or two hour in three D, like to design more the um, the main temple and around the focal point, and maybe maybe redoing a bit like the the layout design on some stuff. But like eighty percent of the image is done, and the painting will take like maybe two to three hours. And uh, it's, <laughs> I'm like astounded at the the level of uh, speed that you put into this stuff. It's so crazy. Thank you for doing this demo. Now I I, I want to clarify that uh, what we're doing here uh, is not necessarily going to go to the end of the finished product of this painting. But, uh, you know, you were talking about, uh, you know, wanting to finish this is sort of yep. on your own time. And, uh, of course, we'll show you guys what that looks like.
Yeah, I, I think uh, I will definitely have the time because I already love the, the email, so now I want to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will definitely have the time like uh, to finish it like during the week, maybe um, on the weekend. And I think I, I will record it and we will uh, add it like to the course as well. So you will have the sci-fi and the fantasy, both of them. Uh, yeah, so inside, that... uh, inside the course. That's a really uh, good point that I, I haven't mentioned yet. But so this is a totally new design that Lewis is doing. We, we talked about that, where this is not featured in the course as it has been recorded. But this demo that we've been doing live on stream, he's actually recording it on his side. Uh, and the full process video of this stream, plus the videos uh, that he's going to make on, on his own time to like finish the image, will actually be added to the course as bonus content. So you guys will be able to see not only the course itself where he narrates you through his whole process, in addition to the bonus, you know, unedited videos like we always have, uh, but on top of all that, there's also gonna be this showing a, a totally different, how to do a totally different design. Uh, and you guys will be able to really just watch it at full resolution, pause, go back, do, do whatever you want to inspect his, uh, his workflow, so. That's, uh, you know, if you, <laughs> if you thought there wasn't enough course content already, <laughs> it's a little bit more for you. There was more. I knew as a student, I, I really loved, like, when I was learning. Uh, and still, when I'm, like, learning from others, uh, I really love, like, uh, digging into the process and, you know, making, pausing all the time, really trying to understand what the, the artist is doing. And uh, Enzo Minaro uh, pointing out that you're really starting, you're, you're like capturing that um, that vibe and that look that you pointed out in the beginning with the uh, the, the mood board that you had made. W would you want to show that? Uh, I don't know if you still have it open, your Pure F4. Uh, yes, yes, it's just in front of me. So so yeah, I had like this old master painter, uh, especially, especially like David Robert and guy like that. And this email, which is definitely my main references in terms even in terms of material. So I did not use like, if we compare, like uh, I have this kind of feeling, but it's the same kind of pattern that we have here. Now. Um, but yeah, yeah, really trying to stay to my, uh, to my, uh, to my mood board, uh, especially if, you know, when you are working, um, director will show you some reference. So um, they, they want you to, to stick with them. So even, in your personal project, if you're able to, to stick with it, I think it's a, a nice skill to have. Being able to stick with your references and making something that you know is uh, is linked. And um, so I, I want to just point out as well to Art Junior, who's uh, asking a very good question: Will this video be able to rewatch later? Um, this YouTube stream will be posted you know, in its full form on our YouTube channel as well. So you'll be able to watch like, you know, the stream itself again afterwards. That's totally doable. Uh, and it'll have, you know, our voices and all the stuff that we're saying here. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, for anybody who gets the course, you will have access to the full process of making this piece of art all the way up to this point and everything through, you know, that happens after this point, you know, uh, up until the picture is finished. So uh, yes, <laughs> in short, the answer to your question is yes, very much so. Uh, you'll be able to rewatch it later. Wallaby8 saying, this is hype. And this is, yeah. this is very <laughs> exciting. This There's a lot of stuff going on. We got like surprises on today's show. We got a giveaway. You're doing a live demo. Mm -hmm. Like it's an exciting day. Yeah, I'm very uh, happy actually to, to be able to do the demo. I wasn't sure at the beginning if I really wanted, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to prepare something. It will be fun. You really just, uh, you know, embracing the unexpected, just jumping yeah, it's in. Yeah, uh, incomfortable, uh, definitely. It's an interesting mm -hmm. um, uh, question as well that's sort of tied to this. Uh, Dundi uh, Chidian saying, uh, how do you deal with artist block? Like, if you are you know, having a problem coming up with ideas and things. And of course, uh, going into a live stream, that must also be kind of stressful of like, oh, you know, am I going to be able to come up with something? Mm -hmm. How do you uh, address that? 
Uh, well, you, you don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, personally, when I, I feel like I'm not. When he's not something. We will find out what he's not in just a second, ladies and gents. Uh, Louis Laurent, uh, that, that was his Zoom call right there. It, uh, it cut us off, but we're going to be bringing him back on to sort of do the f uh, finishing parts of the episode. So stay tuned, ladies and gents. Uh, you know, while I have you here, I'll just throw in one more time that, you know, for anybody who might just be joining, the course Dynamic Concept Art 1 is what we're looking at here. This is uh, Lewis doing a live demo of some of the techniques that you're going to learn in the course uh, once you pick it up. Uh, the course is coming out on the 23rd of November, so very soon, 12 days from now, it's coming out. It's already available for pre-order. You can go to LearnSquared.com slash Lewis, or you could just find it on the website if you go to LearnSquared. Um, the course is already on its Black Friday sale. So this course in particular is already on sale uh, at the same price that it will be for Black Friday. So don't worry, you can pre-order it now. You, you know, you don't have to worry about like waiting until Black Friday starts. So that's pretty cool on its own. In addition to that, we're also doing a giveaway. One lucky viewer is going to get a copy of the course. Uh, somebody's gonna win a copy of the course on today's show. I'll post up this graphic here for anybody who hasn't gotten in yet. All you have to do is comment with a question for Lewis about his art style, about his career, about the course, anything art related. Uh, as long as it's like a thoughtful question and you're not spamming the chat, you're, you know, you're good. You'll be gaining an entry into the contest. You just have to use the hashtag concept art in your uh, question on YouTube. So right in that YouTube chat, post your questions with hashtag concept art. Uh, multiple questions will gain you multiple entries into the contest. Again, that's a uh, with the stipulation that, you know, no spamming the chat, please. <laughs> but yes, thoughtful questions will gain you entries. Um, so we're going to jump into a tr the, the course trailer. Once again, you'll learn more about the course for anybody who hasn't seen the trailer yet. If you have already seen the trailer, you know, maybe you want to watch it again. Ho hopefully you enjoyed it. Otherwise, grab yourself a drink, come back. We're going to have uh, sort of finish out the show here. And uh, we're going to, of course, announce the winner. So make sure you guys stick around till the end because the winner has to be present in order to actually claim their prize. So make sure you stick around for the end when we announce the winner um, and uh, enjoy the trailer. Ladies and gents, we'll see you in just a second. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Louis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Louis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well. From this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users coming out next year. So you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com. Guys, Dynamic Concept Art 1, you've been seeing this trailer, you've been watching the demo, you're seeing the final results of the course right here. Uh, it's just really exciting. There's, there's so much in this course uh, that you'll be able to learn. There's multiple, uh, you know, alternative styles that Lewis teaches so that you can really just take advantage of whichever software you, 
want to use. Uh, and of course, through this demo uh, that we're seeing on today's show, you can make something totally different than the art that he's make, you know, made for the course already that you're looking at on screen. The stuff for this demo, which I'm going to switch to right now, uh, these uh, things on Lewis's screen is like a totally different art style than uh, than what's featured in the course, or a totally different genre, I should say. Um, so you can really just do whatever your imagination, whatever your imagination can handle, you can do with this course, and and that's really really exciting. So uh, Lewis is back on the call. Welcome back, Lewis. Hey, run. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna be sort of winding down on the episode here. So you saw the graphic a second ago. I'll, I'll throw it up on screen again. Make sure you get your questions in if you want to be entered in the giveaway, uh, because you know once the stream ends, that's when we're going to announce the winner. The giveaway for anybody who watches after the fact. We hope you enjoy the you know the show or whatever. But people who watch it after the stream is already over won't be able to enter the giveaway, unfortunately. So if you are watching now and you want to enter the giveaway, as you can see on screen, make sure you post a comment in the chat about uh, you know asking Lewis about his uh, career, his art style, or you know, any questions you have about the course itself um, using the hashtag concept art and you'll be entered in the contest. So uh, I do want to just throw in there one more time that you have to be here. If you want to win, you do have to be here at the end of the episode when we announce the winner. The winner has to be present to claim their prize. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, enjoy more of this amazing demo. Uh, Lewis, what would you say is kind of the... Uh, you know, where are you going from here? Like what, where does the process take you after this point? So here I'm just refining some area in the composition and making sure like, um, so I, I like like to, you know, step back and checking everything. Um, in terms of lighting and, you know, shape, uh, I think I, I start to really love what is happening. Um, I think the next step here is, um, well, if I, if I had like obviously more, more time, I will refine everything. But I think just for the purpose of the demo, I will show you maybe how uh, what kind of pa passes I um, took with me inside Photoshop, and maybe just showing you really quickly maybe the philosophy of um, the Photoshop process and paint over uh, really quickly. Um, and yeah, I think that basically it. So all right. In Term of passes, I will use uh, only the mist pass here. Um, so I know a lot of people, different artists use a lot, a lot of pass. Uh, I do understand, um, but I think the mist pass is uh, like I, I just with experiences I, I saw that 95 percent of the time I use only one pass is the mist. Um, it's really cool and useful because it helps you to um, to basically detach and select everything you want. Uh, for your masking inside Photoshop. Um, so for the mispass, pass, you need to activate it into the viewer uh, layer property. And then to manage your mist, you can go into the little uh, red planet here, world, world properties. And basically you can uh, save the depth and the, um, so you manage basically the gradient of your mist. So sometimes I will uh, do multiple mists, like one for the foreground if I want like a, a, the, a very nice range. Um, and one for the background or mid-ground. But here, I will just grab everything at once. And I will do a very quick render. Uh, most of the time, I do render in 4K. But here, I will do it in um, just in 2K, just so that way it will be really fast. Um, and while we're doing that, I do want to get a couple of, uh, of questions in there. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, Jikido, giving a little wave in there. Hello. <laughs> Um, we have a question from uh, Rex Taurus saying, and thank you, Rex Taurus, for the question. Rex Taurus says, Blender is a very fast-growing piece of software. What tool for you in Blender has been a game-changer in the past? Like maybe you, either that it just came out or that you just discovered recently. Uh, and is there any tool that you think is missing in Blender that they need to add? Uh, in Blender, I think it's more for, um, I think I would love Blender to be more stable, like to have something as stable as 3D code or ZBrush, it would be like the perfect software for me, uh, because I do use a lot the, um, the sculpt tool as well. And 
it tend to be very crashy and um, unstable basically. So I do like a, a control uh, S all the time, like it's a second nature now. Um, but yeah, in terms of tool, I really love like the, the community around Blender and they, they, you know, they do a lot of head on and stuff like that. It's really awesome. Um, what I've done that I use a lot for designing, especially the, the quick shape. So the add-on from uh, Jama and uh, Alexander. Sorry, you are going maybe to, to hear a bit my computer when it's rendering. And yeah, I think Blender, what is great with Blender is that, you know, it's an all-in-one software a bit. So you are doing um, your uh, modeling, uh, your texturing, your, um, um, your rendering, uh, everything in one software. So it's really fast and convenient. Um, before that, I was using Octane um, before the big hype on, the, on Blender. And Octane is, is great. I think like the, the, um, the software itself is, um, you know, is, be is better and is more accurate, the, the rendering engine. But it's so, uh, it's so much a pain to, you know, to import everything in Octane, to do the texture in Octane, uh, the node system, the nodal system is really, in a, uh, is really it gives a deck. And um, like moving stuff in Octane, you have like, you know, to use a gizmo, stuff like that, I mean. And that's why I, as well, I use Unreal. I, I learned Unreal and did some project on Unreal, but same, it's it's horrible to move things in Unreal. Uh, Blender is is so fast just by pressing, you know, the, your hotkey key to rotate, move or stuff like that. It's so, so, so fast. So yeah, for sure, like, especially like for dynamic concept art, uh, Blender, I think is the perfect tool uh, for that. Um, we have another uh, question, which sort of, you know, builds on that. Um, when you're lighting your scene, well, what's your philosophy on, you know, placing your lights, uh, you know, any general lighting tips? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, for lighting, the, the, the goal when I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about two things. The first one, the most important one is, does my, uh, does my, my scene is uh, readable? So do we understand everything? Um, so we do understand that is in front of what um, on the big building here. We do understand like uh, the, the, you know, the form of stuff. So I'm good with that. So everything, you know, is readable. And the second part, um, I would say is um, is a light and a shadow sh uh, des shape design. So um, I, I will try like, you know, to group stuff. Um, so as you can see, like in the foreground, we have, um, if I'm going to the shadow here, we have like this big piece of foreground. So most of the time, you know, we, we speak a lot about um, uh, foreground, midground, and background. So that will be like my foreground. My midground will be this one. Maybe. And everything behind will be like my um, background. So I'm really thinking about that and how I, I, everything is clear. And especially, you know, with the mist pass, we are going like to darken way more the foreground. So it's going to detach uh, way more. And yeah, thinking as well about my shadow shape. So if we cut like, you know, the the shadow and the light, like almost all the shadow in the background are all the same shape. And it's a lot about lim or, or almost like graphic design, you know, like trying to to simplify your shadow shape to have something that you know looks sexy. But uh, it's a lot of trial and errors finding the, the, the a, a nice light for your um, for for your scene. Um, and one tricks that I use a lot is uh, using blocker. So blocker is a um, a big plane that I create. Uh, we should be able to see him is here. So this big plane. I put like a very dark material without any resolution. So it will create a, a big shadow shape with any bounce light. And so I place it, as you can see, just uh, in my foreground area. So it will cast a shadow in my foreground area. And this is what going to, you know, to give this nice um, um, shadow shape in my foreground. And this is what, you know, detach everything from the main ground. So it's a nice trick. And what you can do is going to the visibility and um, ticking uh, camera. So as you can see, if I'm, um, actually this is, they have some specular, I think, yes. 
Um, as you can see, if I'm not taking the camera, we can see the, the plane, but if we don't want to see it in our camera view, we can click on the camera and it won't uh, happen in the, in the rendering, as you can see. So it's a very nice way to manage and create your own shadow design inside your, your piece. And I just want to uh, throw in there as well, I, f I forgot to mention the name of the person who commented, but that, uh, that question came in from Mateus uh, Chiaffa. And thank you, Mateus Chiaffa, for the excellent question. Very important subject is, is lighting. And, and that ties back into as well, you know, some of the uh, photographers and cinematographers that, that Lewis mentioned earlier, studying the work of, you know, a... Uh, artist who deals with light, you know, uh, people who take photos, uh, who shoot films, uh, or just other artists that you think do great lighting, make sure you pay attention to what you think is great about them, you know, and kind of try to analyze them, because it certainly helps, uh, helps your artistic process. So, uh, the, another question from Fulvio Komatsu, uh, talking about do you feel that 3D has sort of changed the the way that uh, concept art is done? Like you can just do a lot of ideation and change things around. Uh, what you know? What do you think is significant about the amount of changes that have gone from doing paintings to doing 3D uh, concepting, and then to take that one step further, like going into VR, is like a whole another jump. Yeah, um, definitely. I think VR doesn't impact the industry as much as 3D impacts the industry, of course. Uh, this is still very niche. Uh, there, there is not that much uh, artists actually using VR in their daily workflow. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, to be honest, like uh, I always knew 3D, like I didn't know how the industry was before that. I only know uh, some, you know, older uh, dinosaurs speaking about that. And, um, but, okay, my photo question, but, um, yeah, I think 3D is a very powerful tool. I, I know my mind is, um, I, I'm working better uh, with shapes in 3D with volume rather than, you know, with uh, line drawing. So I really don't think like you, you have to know exactly how to draw from imagination to be a concept artist nowadays. Uh, there are plenty of artists working a lot in 3D, like doing 80% of their uh, of their concept in 3D, and and they are doing uh, really good, you know. So working on very triple A, triple A project or big big movies um, production. Um, so it really depends. I think if you are really um, fast and efficient with 3D, you can even do like really quick concept art as 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 we are doing right now, you know. So. Um. So. And one just quick uh, question from Arjunian saying, uh, it's talking about the paint over stage. Like what, take us through what kind of things you're going to cover here for paint over. Because you were mentioning earlier that you didn't necessarily want to finish uh, yeah, the whole painting um, today, but you want to so go over I'm just, Yeah, I'm just re re recreating my folder structure that I use all the time. So people will have a nice idea of the workflow because I'm really following the folder structure. Um, so we do have the first folder in orange, this is a plate. So this is where I'm going to put my render. So sometimes I have multiple render. For example, here, um, I, I should like re-render the same scene without the character. So the character will be only like, um, you know, a scale references when I'm going to photo bash stuff. Um, and I seek my Photoshop freeze. So I'm going to save. Always remember to save, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah and quit everything. Thank you, Adobe. Yeah. <laughs> Always very uh, stable, uh, Photoshop as well. Um, and um, so after importing everything, so sometimes, you know, we have like multiple um, um, uh, renders, multiple paces. Um, okay. Um, so the first, Folders is, is a paint over, so PO for paint over. Um, the goal with this one is to clean the render. So if there is any area inside your render that you know uh, feel a bit off or uh, you are not happy with it, you, you want to redesign, um, 
you can definitely is is the is the right time to do it before jumping to the value design. Um, I'm just recreating everything. Give me a second. So PO two. So I will put a PO two after the value design and after the Photoshop a PO three. So normally this is the the folder structure that I use all the time. So the workflow is very you know precise and it's all the time the same. Um, so the value structure, uh, I will quickly like um, do um, a graphical separation of the uh, background, mid-ground, and foreground. And for that, I will use the mispass. Uh, for the foreground, I will invert uh, the mispass. So everything in white will be um, what's uh, gonna be you know um, inside. Or so if I paint, it will paint only in the white area. So my render is in 2K. Uh, as you can see, like the mispass is not very good, um, but it, it will be fine at least for the purpose of the demo. Um, so the first goal is to um, separate the foreground from the from the rest. So we can darken darkening a bit of everything. So I will on purpose push it a bit too much, um, just to you know to have a very clear uh, separation. Then we have like the middle ground. Um, so just using like a level to uh, again to manage everything. So in the mid ground, um, we maybe want to push everything a bit more um, slightly in the distance, very slightly. And as well, we want to push maybe a bit like the focal point in some part. And uh, I just want to throw in there about uh, Mateus Chiaffa, uh, about the question about lighting. Uh, Mateus Chiaffa responded, thanks for the reply, amazing. I didn't know about this uh, kind of blockout technique. It's so useful, and the stream is full of great information. So much to learn. Yeah, thank, thank you. Actually, it's a technique that they use on set in uh, cinema. Uh, they, they do have like big piece of uh, you know they call it blocker as well, and the goal is really to block the light and create like very uh, clear cast shadow. And they do separate like the foreground with the midground uh, with a big uh, big piece of uh, of cloth or in white uh, in the dark, so they don't bounce light. Uh, and you could put you could put like maybe the blocker with a with a color like I don't know like a blue color so it, it will bounce a blue color you know on your uh, ground as well. It's a really nice way as well to bounce light. And so uh, just one more time, since we are in sort of the final section of the show, uh, we're into the paint over stage here, and I, I want to remind everybody or to anybody who's just joining. What we're doing here is we're premiering for the first time Louis Laurent's brand new Learn Squared course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. This is coming out on uh, November 23rd, which is a very short 12 days away. And uh, the you can get it at uh, learnsquared.com slash Lewis, or if you just go to learnsquared.com, you'll find it there. Uh, the course is already on its Black Friday sale price, so don't worry about waiting for Black Friday. You can, you can pre-order it right now at the sale price you'll get on Black Friday. We are doing a live demonstration where uh, Lewis is actually designing a brand new concept design using the techniques featured in the course to do something totally different. So uh, the course itself, um, I'm just going to jump over to this thumbnail view here. So you can see these are the pictures that are, uh, you know, came out of the course itself. He did four total deliverables, uh, you know, all in this amazing science fiction sort of uh, you know, abstract science fiction world, uh, really, really just stunning work. And as you can see in the, uh, the demo that we're doing here, also stunning work in a totally different genre. So it's a totally different kind of theme. He's really showing how you can utilize the techniques in this course to make all different kinds of art, not just, uh, you know, something in the same vein as, as what he makes in the, the course itself. What's even more exciting is that we are actually giving away a copy of the course to one lucky viewer watching the show. So if you want to enter the giveaway, you're in your last you know, moments of chances to actually enter. 
So make sure you get in if you haven't done so already. As you can see on screen here, all you have to do is comment in the YouTube chat with a question for Lewis about his uh, art style, his career, his new course, using the hashtag concept art. That's going to get you an entry into the giveaway contest to win a copy of the course. We're giving away uh, one copy of the course to one lucky viewer. So um, yeah, guys, get, get in there with your questions if you have not done so already. And uh, enjoy the rest of uh, Lewis's amazing demo. I do want to throw in there as well one more time, just really thank you to everybody who's been a part of today's show. We've been going for, it was like two and a half hours at this point. Um, <laughs> it, you know, to everybody who's been hanging out during the whole show, like, thank you so much for being a part of the show, making it even better by, you know, sharing your enthusiasm and, and just asking all these amazing questions. Like, I'm just so impressed by how many great questions we've had, you know? It's like, you yeah, never yeah. know with a QA. and a This is great. Very great. Yeah. Thank you again. Uh, and hello to uh, Tolfek joining the show. Uh, hello to you as well. Welcome. So yeah, guys, it's pretty much uh, that's you know that's it. Uh, I think at this point, it's just uh, you know spending uh, hours on it and you know refining everything uh, to the point where everything is looking really great. And then when the value design, so you can see how much depth it already had. Um, so we really push the foreground. Uh, um, we push as well a bit the background, especially with this area where the sun is uh, is coming from. Um, and so I will need like, obviously to clean that. Um, even the texture in the background is way too big, so I will need like to re-render to to make it at the same scale. Um, and obviously here, I think a second uh, paint over. I will start maybe to. To do some uh, design about the storytelling of this place so you know maybe we could have like opening here um, uh, with people hanging so i will you know photo bash a lot of stuff um, it will be some kind of maybe a bazaar where you know a marketplace um, so yeah and then photo bashing stuff like that uh, some texture, some rock, uh, especially in the foreground, as you can see, like the, the assets are, are quite uh, low in resolution, but all the, the nice um, shape are already there. So I will maybe use the shape as a as a placeholder and photo bash some uh, uh, more realistic te texture. Uh, same refining, like, you know, uh, breaking maybe some 3D aspect here on the sand. So just refining everything and um, giving a, a better look, giving some love to the design and to this piece. Um, so the photo bash will be in this folder, same idea with the background, mid-ground, foreground, then a final paint over. Uh, so the final paint over is where as well I will give the painterly look, you know, breaking all the edges, um, everything, and merging everything with the painterly feeling. And the post-process, most of the time, you know, some uh, chromatic aberration and um, some noise. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it, uh, guys. For the, for the demo just incredible work lewis and and so the the process that you're describing that would you know you would want to do afterwards what what would you say is kind of like the timeline on that sort of thing like how, how long would that sort of take you as a i think uh, i will go back in 3d like maybe cleaning some stuff and just importing the part that i know clean uh refining maybe some part in the design uh, i would say like a good two hour in 3D. So I will spend like four hours in total in 3D. And then the paint over, like, uh, I think the paint over can be quite quick, uh, like two to three hours again. So a day a day of work, actually, like it will be, you will have like a nice concept uh, to show to your to your client with the design, with the, the layout, the level design, the lighting. So, I mean, it's, it's, quite, it's quite good, you know, to show to the client. And it's just amazing to see you know, true to the stuff that we were talking about in the trailer of the course, when we were starting out this episode, like within the first few minutes, you already had, you know, the majority of the, you know, major shapes and major concepts for the court for this picture. Like, mm -hmm. it's that that sort of like really fast ideation is, uh, you know, as you guys saw in this demo here, it, it really works like, it, you know, it's it, it, it 
allows you to just work very fast, you know, iterate very fast and come up with very, very cool ideas. Uh, Wonderland saying here, awesome stuff. Uh, Twin Sane saying, it's just amazing to watch you develop this in such a short time. Absolutely love, uh, you know, this image and, and where it's going. And, and thank you to everybody who's been a part of today's show. So this demo portion of the show uh, it's just been a real treat to experience. I, I just want to take the opportunity once again to thank Lewis for taking the time, you know, out of your day and going to such extra lengths to make this incredible demo for us. Thank you so much. Uh, and, thank you guys for having me. And, you, you know, I, I really like want to give back to the community. Like I learned so much from so many people. Like I really feel that, you know, I, I want to do like uh, make part as well to the job. So giving back and if I can inspire some people as well to flow the same kind of workflow, you know, having fun and being uh, instinct um, driven and, you know, really focusing on having fun and creativity. I mean, that, that's it. So, so again, thank you. Big thank you for Land Square for trusting uh, in me and uh, in my, uh, in my work. And so guys, uh, as you've uh, been hearing throughout the show, we have a giveaway to do today. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it's pretty exciting because we're getting to the point where we're going to be giving away a free copy of the course to one lucky viewer. You guys have been asking your questions and, you know, I, I'm going to say it again. All the questions have been great. So thank you so much to everybody who's been asking. I will say one more time to everybody who uh, is just joining. I'll explain a little bit about what we're doing here today, what the course is. Um, but before I do that, guys, can you know, and we're seeing some flood of just really positive stuff in the chat. Can we get some love in that chat? Show some love for Lewis, who just did this amazing demo. Uh, you know, show your excitement for the course. Just show your love for anything and everything, because this has been a great day. I, I've learned a lot. I, you know, I'm sure everybody here has just learned a whole lot of stuff. And uh, it, thank you so much uh, to you guys in the chat for being a part of today's show. Again, to Lewis for, for doing this demo. And uh, for anybody who does not know what is going on, we're premiering Louis Laurent's brand new Learn Squared course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. We just announced it today on this stream, and uh, the course is coming out very soon. It's coming out on November 23rd uh, of this year, so that's 12 days from now. You guys, you know, course incoming very fast. Uh, the Black Friday pricing is already active on this course. So if you go to learnsquared.com slash Lewis right now, you will get um, the pricing of the Black Friday sale for this course already. So for anybody who wants to pre-order the course, rest assured that you are going to get that, uh, that deal without having to wait for Black Friday to come around. Now... What Lewis just did here uh, is a two and a half hour incredible demonstration of the techniques that he shows off in his course. Uh, he made a totally new concept design pretty much from scratch uh, in Blender and now is doing like a paint over in Photoshop. Um, and the, the design from where it is right now is even going to go further after the fact and will be included as a process video in the course. So uh, you guys have actually watched history be made, as it were. You watched something that be created that is going to actually end up in the course itself as bonus content. So, you know, it, it, enjoy. I, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this exclusive look into Lewis's process. And <clears throat> to anybody who is excited about this giveaway that's happening right now. So, guys, uh, we're going to, you know, send this over to the, you know, the people who are tallying all of the... Uh, all the questions that you guys have been asking, just a lot of amazing questions. I want to give a, you know thanks to uh, uh, all the people who have been asking stuff. Dougie Ladd, who asked uh, before the show started, had some great questions to kick it off. Even even though Dougie Ladd wasn't able to make it for the show itself, thank you for your great questions, Marsa. So uh, yeah, it's it it's just an overwhelming response uh, with great great uh, you know stuff from you guys. So uh, Marsa, thank you. Wonderland, Loey HG, Twin Sane. Thank you guys for the questions. Uh, Remus, Matthew Ogram, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, Sundstrom, Sharam, uh, thank you as well. Uh, Rax Taurus, thank you for the question. 
Lucas Pacheco, Dondi uh, Chiudian. Thank you guys uh, for your questions. This is like, it's so cool. Uh, Art Junian, uh, thank you for the question. Mateus Chiafa, Fulvo Komatsu, uh, John Davia, Norks, thank you guys uh, for your questions. And to anybody else whose name I may have skipped over, you're not forgotten. <laughs> thank you guys for all of your amazing questions. You, you guys all contributed to this show. I, I hope that, uh, that you learned something today. Uh, and, you know, let's, uh, you know, just wait in there for the, the final tally of like how this, uh, how this raffle turned out. So to remind you guys, anybody who asked a question with the hashtag concept art, uh, was entered in the giveaway. Multiple questions can, you know, have gained multiple entries into the uh, giveaway itself. So that means that a person who asked multiple questions, uh, would have more chances to win. So uh, good luck to all. Uh, let's get some good lucks in that chat. Oh, we got a lot of hearts and stuff, a lot of really cool stuff. Mars not saying you rock, Lewis. So cool seeing your work grow over the years. Keep it up. Good luck. Super solid. You have all my support. Thank you, guys. It really mean a lot. Uh, we hope you enjoy. I'm just going to flood you here, Lewis, with some uh, with some positivity. Are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot in here. Enzo Minaro saying that was amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you, Lewis, uh, for generosity and for this awesome demo. And oh, thanks to the host. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nick. I forgot you. Um, uh, the Wonderland, Fubo Komatsu, uh, Art Junior, Norx, all posting those hearts. Uh, and uh, you know, just so much positivity. Twin Sane, thank you so much to Lewis and Laren Squared. Lewis is a genius, says Mateus Chiafa. His work is mind blowing. <laughs> Fuvo, uh, Fuvio Komatsu saying, Lewis is amazing. John DeVia, thanks, Lewis. Art Junior, uh, uh, Fuvio, once again, the amazing content made my night. Marza with that positivity. Thank you so much, guys. I think we have the results in here. Let's, uh, I wish I had like a drum roll sound effect that I could play. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I, I can tap on, my, tap on my desk here. So again, uh, I just want to remind you guys that the uh, winner does have to be present in the show so we're gonna announce the name of somebody and uh you know make sure that you respond in the chat like oh you know i'm here because <laughs> uh you gotta we gotta make sure that you're actually uh hanging out and then we can you know g give you the next steps to get your prize so now the proper drum roll occurs okay the winner the proud winner of a new copy of dynamic concept art one twin sane eight Twin Sane Eight, come on down. Say hi in the chat. Let us know that you're uh, like, that you're hanging out here. And uh, can we get some positivity for? I know you know a lot of people were excited to possibly win a copy, but let's get some positivity for our winner. You know, anybody who is hanging out there, let's get some uh, you know congratulations in that chat there. Congratulations to Twin Sane Eight uh, on winning a copy of the course. Make sure you post in the chat. Uh, the YouTube chat right now and let us know that you're hanging out and uh, in the meantime we'll just enjoy some of the amazing sights of Lewis uh, continuing to refine the picture hey there's twin saying eight ah no way amazing amazing nice. congrats congratulations to you twin saying eight and uh, Wonderland Enzo Mars Fulvio Mateus everybody's saying a lot of really positive stuff a lot of congratulations in there. And, you know, that's good sportsmanship right there. You know, that's people are really being being good sports about it. Thank you guys for it, just everybody being awesome. So uh, the next steps here, Twin Sane 8, let us know. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't have a like private message function. But if you have a Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, let us know your uh, your handle uh, in the chat there. And we will send you a message on a private message on there to uh, you know do your next steps for gaining your access to the course. Of course, that is going to be uh, once the course comes out, you will have a free copy that you'll be able to uh, access. And I do want to just throw it out there to anybody who enjoyed today's show. The course itself is uh, available for pre-order. If you guys like what you saw, make sure you go check out. Lewis's full course, Dynamic Concept Art 1. He goes through uh, and creates four incredible, incredible pictures. I'm going to cut back over to uh, the...
the imagery that was created from the course itself. Uh, it's just a, a lot of learning, a lot of amazing stuff. So uh, make sure you guys check that out, learnsquared.com slash Lewis. And uh, you can pre-order the course right now. And, and the nice consolation prize, if you didn't win, if you're not Twin Saiyan 8 and you did not win a copy of the course, uh, then you can still uh, pre-order at the Black Friday sale price. So uh, the course is on sale uh, in its discounted form right now. So you'll be able to uh, get in there, save a few dollars. Actually, a lot of dollars. It's like a huge sale. It's like a... 66% off sale. So that's that's some Black Friday savings right there. Um, so Twinsane 8, let us know in the uh, chat just uh, your Instagram or Twitter or whatever handle for social media, and we'll get in contact with you on there. I don't think... I, I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't really know that much about how YouTube works, but uh, I don't think you can send private messages on YouTube, no, so we won't be able to send yeah. them a... Uh, yeah, I don't think we can send them a... Uh, a info about that on there. But uh, either that or TwinSane8, if you tell us your uh, LearnSquared username, that works as well on the website. But uh, post that in the chat. And uh, while we wait for that, uh, so that's your homework right now, TwinSane8. You post that in the YouTube <laughs> chat. And while we wait for that, um, for anybody who maybe uh, missed out or if you want to see it again, let's, uh, let's go watch that trailer one more time. So uh, we'll, we'll close the show out here with, with a nice trailer, and uh, I hope you guys uh, had a great time. It sounds like everybody really enjoyed the show. I, I'm very glad to hear that, and, uh, it, you know, thanks for being a part of it. So here's the course trailer. Enjoy. Become a better concept designer by learning to trust your instincts. Louis Laurent constantly delivers stunning designs with fully realized worlds to support them. And to do this, his style hinges on throwing away all his preconceptions and trusting in happy accidents to create the most interesting concepts. In this brand new Learn Squared course, Lewis is going to take you into his world, helping you to unlock the creativity of your subconscious to majorly speed up your design process. He'll teach you to look at the most basic shapes and immediately see their potential, allowing you to work faster than you ever thought possible. And don't worry, if you don't have VR, Lewis shows off the exact same methods in traditional 3D software as well. From this point, Lewis will begin turning his assets into a world, where the same mindset of experimentation extends all the way through his process. Just because you designed an asset one way doesn't mean it has to keep that function forever. Everything is subject to change, with new sizes, new shapes, new perspectives. This course is designed specifically with beginner to intermediate students in mind, so don't worry if you're not so confident with the tools. And even better, Lewis is currently working on a second course geared towards advanced users coming out next year. So you'll be able to keep learning and boost your skills even further. So don't wait. You have an entirely new world of concept design waiting for you. Pre-order today at LearnSquared.com. Welcome back, guys. The show is coming to a close, unfortunately, but the learning continues. You like that? I, I just came up with that. Uh, Dynamic Concept Art 1 is coming out 12 days from now on November 23rd. The Black Friday price pricing is already in effect, so you'll be able to uh, get that at a major discount uh, if you pre-order now. So we did have a very, very lucky winner, Twin Sane 8, and thank you for telling us your Learn Squared uh, your Learn Squared username, so we'll we'll be in contact with you after the show about getting you your copy of the course. Huge congratulations to Twin Saint Eight! Thank you so much to everybody for watching the show. And again, if you did did not win and you want to get a copy of the course, Dynamic Concept Art One is available for pre order right now, and you're going to save a pretty penny on the show. Uh, once again, big thanks to everybody for watching. Big thanks to Lewis for doing thank this you, whole thank thing you everyone thank and you so much is there uh any social media stuff that you want to uh shout out lewis that people should check out uh honestly uh i mean you have my instagram so luis uh, laurent uh and 
my air station as well if you want like to see maybe my latest and more refined uh, work but yeah that's pretty much it so thank you so much guys for being here and supporting your all your nice question and your support uh you really uh really feel it in my heart it's really nice uh, thank you so much guys the warm and fuzzy feeling yeah <laughs> we're feeling it right now um so guys yeah if, if you do want to uh just be able to click on a link for lewis's stuff you can check the description of the video and you'll see his uh his social links there as well and of course you'll see a link to the course uh the course page if you want to uh check out more info about that Guys, that's going to do it for the show. Thank you so much for watching. Y you know, if you want to see more uh, learning content, our trailers, our live streams, and, and, you know, sometimes we post sneak peeks of the course, like little clips and stuff from the course, make sure you follow, uh, subscribe to Learn Squared on YouTube. That's always good to do. Check out Learn Squared's YouTube. Uh, the Instagram's always got a lot of great stuff. The social team's killing it. So, you know, follow Learn Squared everywhere. And uh, that's going to do it, guys. We'll, we'll see you on the next one. Tune in next time for more learning, whatever that may be. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.